baseball. It's America's favorite pastime. A sports tradition virtually unchanged for 150 years. But this season, there's something new on the horizon. The Colorado Rockies. Baseball at a whole new level. Right field, you know, Carlos you saw Gonzalez. that sign right there, and that's one of the things that I've been thinking about, and I'm sure you have as well, Spilly, that this is not only uplifting for the Rockies as an organization, but because Chad was so front and center and so honest about what he was going through and candid about what he was going through, so many other people have been lifted through his fight. So many people who are going through their own fight. And so it is a particularly special night for all of those folks, all the cancer survivors out there to watch Chad Bettis. You're big on social media. You were checking it a short while ago. You came across, for instance, Andrew McCutcheon, who does not know Chad Bettis at all, right. other than you know, their, their colleagues in the same business, if you will. And he had a marvelous message among many they're paying attention tonight to what's going on at 20th and Blake in Denver, Colorado. At, I think when you look at a night like tonight for Chad and for just baseball, it's the opportunity to see somebody go through something and inspire. Bettis is back August the 14th. If you go back to last winter when he was first diagnosed, is it? an anniversary dinner when he found out officially that he did have cancer. And he went through surgery and then thought he was he was home free basically and then found out that it had spread. He went through nine intensive weeks of chemotherapy, finished that up in May and in early June he was back with the club. He made six appearances, five starts in Rehabbing, trying to get right back here. And his first pitch in his return is strike one. And Jonathan Lucroy is going to toss that ball aside. And Chad can put that up on his mantle. 14 and 8 last year. A 7 and 2 record in the second half last year with a 375 ERA. Ender and Ciarte tried to lay down a bunt. It's 0 and 2. One thing that you will recall, I'm sure, because it's not all that long ago, but Chad Bettis works as quick as anybody in baseball. Here's the 0-2. Inciarte, an all-star this year for Atlanta. In fact, he's second in the National League in hits to the guy who plays center field for the Rockies. This Braves team may be 11 games under 500, but they have some parts to it. That's well, going to be a challenge. It's going to be a challenge for Chad's first game back. I know I love the pace. Uh, that's something that we've always just adored when you see Chad take the mound is how quickly he gets the ball and gets ready to compete. 0-2, that serve to left. Parra comes on and gets by him. And Enciarte can really run. In fact, this could be a situation where he tries to score. They're going to send him. And the throw to the plate is in time. Out at the plate. Luke Croy, a great tag. <laughs> what a way How to about start that for a start? <laughs> Chad
Trevor Story made a beautiful throw. Excuse me, sling off the bat. Part trying to make an unbelievable play for Chad. That's to the farthest part for Gerardo. There's no backing up. There's nobody there when you're diving in left field. But the relay throw from Trevor strike to get Enciarte at home plate. That is a perfect, perfect throw by Trevor Story. Well, one out. <laughs> Brandon Phillips up. 7-6-2 on that put out. Phillips takes a strike on the inside corner. You have to look and make sure that the catcher gives the proper sliding lane for Enciarte, and that's exactly what Luke Croy does. He doesn't give, doesn't block the plate. You nailed it too, Spilly. You were an outfielder. You are a, a guy that wears his emotions at times on his sleeve. Gerardo Parr is that kind of guy. And you know what? Ordinarily, he's going to let that ball drop, keep it in front of him, base hit. That's, that's all he'd be concerned about. And he wanted to lay out as if it was the ninth inning and the winning run was at third. You don't think this you game matters? You can't yeah. fault him for that. No, you can't. And that's what I'm saying. You don't think this game matters to the guys on the field tonight. It's not just a normal August 12th, August 14th baseball game at Coors Field. Two outs, and here's another guy that's familiar with all-star games and other such accolades. Freddie Freeman, who went healthy this year, has been a terror. 322 batting average, 21 home runs. He missed more than six weeks with a broken wrist when he was hit. And Freeman lines this toward Cargo, and Cargo is going to let it drop as that ball had top spin on it, came over the top of it. So Freeman with a single with two outs. And that'll bring up Nick Markakis. Here's the Southwest batting order for Atlanta tonight. Brian Snitker will have Kurt Suzuki batting behind Markakis. Danny Santana's in left field. Matt Kemp remains out. Ozzy Albies is a young man they really like a lot. Dansby Swanson, I'm sure you've heard of. Over top prospect one of the top prospects in baseball he'll bat eight and then Julio Tehran two outs Markakis at the plate and he takes down low Markakis has hit much better out on the road than at SunTrust their new home ballpark which I find that hard to believe that's, that's that is surprising his plate is an offensive park so far and the Rockies will see SunTrust next week Markakis is not your prototypical cleanup hitter. Likes to spray the ball. More of a doubles hitter, gap to gap. Doesn't strike out a lot. Inside. Marcakis more than 2,000 hits in his career. And this ball is on the ground to DJ, and that's all. Nice start for Chad Bettis, and he'll get a standing ovation coming off the mound in the first inning. Rocky's getting ready to go against Chris Heston. Charlie Blackman naturally will be first, and here's the Southwest batting order for Walt Weiss. Jose Reyes will bat second. Jose's really coming on offensively. And then it'll be Cargo. He'll be in that three spot, the average at 276. Nolan Arenado, a home run in four consecutive games. Then the return of Justin Morneau, he'll be in the five spot. DJ will bat six, Ben Paulson seven, Nick Hundley eight, the 304. What a bonus having your uh, eighth place hitter hitting over 300. Jorge will bat ninth naturally. And here's Chris Heston. It's been 
mostly good stuff for Chris Heston. Some outstanding stuff in his rookie campaign. 11 victories highlighted by that no-no over the Mets. 11 and 8 overall record. 6 and 2 out on the road, which is uh, obviously a very good number. But 5 and 6 at home. That's a little unusual in a pitcher's ballpark. 0 and 3 in his last five starts. An earned run average near 6. He was demoted to the minor leagues a week ago to go there and kind of take a breather just take a step back for him and then he's back here starting again with Lenskin surgery they needed to plug back in again first 20 games 11 and 5 with a three yard run average one of the reasons he got demoted an ERA of 571 in the month of August this ball is pulled toward the hole sliding stop and the out is recorded well done by Kelby Tomlinson Tomlinson takes a hit away from Charlie Blackman. Well, here he is against the Mets earlier this year. And George, he wasn't that far from throwing a perfect game. The game was at City Field. He struck out 11, didn't walk a batter. You say, oh, was there an error behind him? No errors behind him. He hit three guys. He hit three guys in the ball game, but a no hitter for the youngster. His command is. Typically very good. The fastball is going to range 89 to 92 miles an hour. He's going to sink it. He's going to cut it. He's got good, good secondary stuff. He knows how to pitch. And if you look back at his minor league history, he started out in uh, Arizona in the summer league after graduating from East Carolina University, and he went one and five. The next year at Augusta, which is in the Sally League, he went five and 11, five and 13. Excuse me. San Jose, 12 and four. He sent him to double-A, went 9-8, and eight, but his earned run average of 2.24 was the second lowest in the history of the Sally League. Sir Camp, 2.02 earned run average. Fresno in 2014, he was 12-9. and nine. He got the opportunity to come to the big leagues, and he's made the most of it this year with the injuries to their rotation. Yeah, a couple other notes to add to what George is saying. This is a 12th round pick out of East Carolina. Glad to see a guy make it like that. Just like your short, just like your second baseman, Tomlinson. Yep. Yeah. And he's now, he's not, a, he's, you know, he's, he's a rookie, but he's not a puppy. He's 27 years of age. Turned 27 the right. first week of the season. Well, he's climbed every step of the ladder. He's repeated AAA twice. This was the third year there at AAA. He's had the opportunities and he's taken advantage of the biggest one that's been handed to him over these uh, 22 plus starts at the big league level. Two and two on Jose Reyes and another chance for Tomlinson to go on the backhand side two outs. So here comes cargo. Last night he got it going in a hurry against Vogelsong who he was one for 17 against until that swing and he goes. Opposite field two run shot and then the next time up he said you know what I can pull the ball still And he hit that one for a home run Actually that was two at bats later because he had the double to left also four home runs and five at bats Inside he has faced Heston now six times one for six he owns a double against him Guys like Heston sometimes can be difficult to pick the ball up because it's a high leg kick, but it's a short, quick arm action off the back hip. So you don't get to really identify the ball very long. Hides it really well along his body line. I thought maybe they might do the high school thing and not even throw it, just hold up four and say go first. <laughs> right. Well, it's right now, ostensibly, it's the same thing because they right. have not come close to throwing a strike. And then when Arenado comes up, you hold up four and send him two, and I'll take my chances down the line. Jim Joyce will let you know, me know, and the greater Rocky Mountain area know when it's a strike. And I love that. But how do you? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. They threw fed him a strike, and if it's fair, it is gone. It is a foul ball. Kerwin Danley got down on one knee, studied it the whole way. Now, that is reviewable. I don't know if it was without question. It was so high, George, I have no idea. Well, I don't, you know, the thing is, it was very high, but I thought it really faded the last 30, 40 feet as it got there. You see Cargo kind of leaning. Is it going to make it? Going to make it. EY's leaning. Kerwin Daniels, Daniels leaning. See Cargo's like, okay. Well, you know, Walt's coming out. Walt's coming out. They may take a look at this. Yeah. 
Yep, there they are. They are going to take a look at it. Did it? I, we got to go back because that it's so I mean, it's so high. You almost wish like some fans down there saw yelling it touched you fair. Right? <laughs> Help you out. Is that allowed? Yeah, well, they can do whatever they want to. They bought a ticket, right? That's absolutely correct. They can set their give it to give it to this action. Within reason. Yeah. Time for a Subaru review. Whether you're on the road or at the game, everybody could use a second set of eyes. I wonder how disconcerting this is now. You know, obviously where it lands is foul, but it's where it crossed over the foul pole. I'm, I'm trying to find the baseball up there. Now keep in mind, in New York, they'll be able to really push. We have a ton of cameras here. It's just it's one of those ones that's very, very difficult to tell. Said foul. You can see Jim Joyce said it's foul according to he said like by a foot and a half, two feet. So I wonder how disconcerting it is, George, because Cargo's been standing there. I know Heston has also for a couple of minutes, waiting till they figure it out. So now it's three and two. Well, if you're Heston, you're going, I don't want to throw that one again. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking about right now. Bochi and Rigetti are telling him the same thing. This one's fair and this one's got. Okay. Nowhere near the foul pole. That'll work. Are you kidding me? I mean, is this the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen? Oh, is this fun to watch? 36 now for Cargo with 85. Look, look at Boach's face. Really? That's the next pitch. Unbelievable. It is remarkable. And, 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 and they were trying to bring the ball on the inner half with a fastball that they threw inside. He's just so quick right now and seeing the ball so well. Look where they set up. And that ball hung to the outside corner. Slider at 78 miles an hour. I'm not so sure it was a strike. And George, as we always say about cargo, he doesn't hit wall scrapers. This yeah. ball's well hit. Arenado's got back to back. Whatever you can do, I can do. <laughs> Such a fun tandem to watch right now. This is something yeah. special. Dance about it, you bet. They ought to both take a bow. Give him a curtain call. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you remember oh, Spilly sit down 48 hours ago? And they're, and they're both tied. They're kidding each other. Hey, whoever wins it, great. They had a great time visiting with Spilly in the clubhouse. Cargo since then's hit like five homers, and, and Nolan's hit three. It's been amazing. Fastball wanted an outer half, put an inner half, and it's a laser to left off the bat of Nolan Arenado to left field. And that's a home run now in five straight games. We didn't mean to. Overshadow Justin Morneau's return. Look at this. That is his reaction to Cargo right behind him. Don't sit out, folks, when those two are there. If you're in the dugout, make there's sure a big hit in his return for Morneau. Good for Justin. Oh, he loved it. The guy said, he's a Manning title. This guy's not the first time he'd won it either. Yeah, not his first rodeo, huh? Yeah, then think about it. Just look up how many hits and awards he's got. Cargo and Nolan have combined in 71 home runs. They've now moved in front in baseball of Albert Pujols and Mike Trout ahead of Josh Donaldson and Jose Batista with Toronto. Chris Davis, who's had an extraordinary second half as well, he along with Manny Machado have combined to hit 64. DJ is six for nine lifetime against Chris Heston. Here's the permagrin. I'd be smiling ear to ear also.
What made it even wilder is he, he hits one five miles and they have to go and watch it on in New York to determine whether it was fair or foul. That takes, you know, three, four minutes by the time the process is done. The very next pitch, he hits 450 feet. A slider that was away at 78 and about knee high. You know, you were kidding earlier, Fresh, sort of, about the old high school thing. Right. The next time he comes up, if there's any, if they, even with a man on first, Boach may say put him on. Yeah, he may. I mean, this is a, you're looking at Bonds type stuff right now. They used to walk Barry. I remember it was uh, Buck Showalter walked Barry with the bases loaded that's one right. time in San Francisco. I'm not saying that's what Boach is going to do, but put Buck it this Showalter way: I, I guarantee you, he will think about it. I'm not saying with the bases loaded, but he will think about even if there's a man on first, if there's traffic out there, passing on him. Yeah, but you're passing to more danger, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, I know. The other guys hit five, five straight. Home run in five straight. Yeah, so what do you do with pick your poison? And that ties the Rockies record. Larry Walker did it in 99. Dante Bichette in 95. And now Nolan in five straight. Three, two. And swung on and missed. That'll end the inning. Put the Rockies off to another fabulous start. Cargo again. Nolan again. On this Memorial Day, 2 nothing Colorado. Giants are now. Have to try to play catch up against one of the very best in Ubaldo Jimenez, and it'll be Aubrey Huff to lead things off. Aubrey Huff now has some experience against Jimenez. Saw three pitches, and now he watches his fourth pitch. And he jumps back out of the way, 2 and 0. Well, that'll. Take the lid out of your belly button. That fastball at 96 going across the waist. Three and zero. Oh. And he minutes can hit a wild streak. Three and one. Rebay to follow. And the walk. Well, let's take a look at our flip video splash cam. And earlier today, there was a tribute from San Francisco Fire Department as they came in with their fire boat and turned on the hoses. And I like that thing. I do too. I need that to water my lawn. That's our flip video splash cam here on Memorial Day. Here's a rebate hitting 288. Breaking ball for a strike. He's three for five lifetime against Jimenez with a couple of doubles. Line drive foul. The first row of the club level and that got to the club level in a hurry. Everybody all right? Oh yeah. Just watch those little ones. Oh and two, a rebate. Kind of split the dirt. Rockies know that your rebate will chase balls in the dirt. They're trying to take advantage of that tendency. Get ahead of a guy 0-2. You could pitch to his weakness. Two and two. Buster Posey chalking up. And he just got a piece of it. So Arrive gets to see another pitch. 
leads this team in RBIs with 29. It's the hat worn by all major leaguers today. See Matt Downs is called up today, replacing Ryan Rollinger, who was put on the disabled list. And this squirts away, and Aubrey Huff gets a free 90 feet. Well, that's a big 90 because down around the knees, when Jimenez throws the two-seamer, he will get a lot of ground balls. Her ball just kind of hits up and spits away for Miguel Olivo. Pure wild pitch. Three and two to Juan Arebe. Got him. Oh, you talk about an unhittable pitch. This is 99 mile an hour at the knees with movement coming back to the play. Sort of a backdoor sinker at 99. Can't hit that pitch. That may be the greatest pitch ever thrown. That's an understatement. Here's Buster Posey. Posey takes a strike. He's started out the season. Six for nine. See his numbers in Fresno where he had 349. He's had the knack of knocking in runs since he arrived. Fouls this one out of play, and now he's behind. Oh, and two. Benji Molina on deck. Time for a chat between Olivo and Jimenez. Well, I don't know what they're saying. I just know they're talking Spanish. This will be pitch number 36 coming up to Buster Posey for Jimenez. Although Jimenez is like Matt Cain. He's built to throw about 240 a game. 0 and 2. And Posey got a piece of it to stay alive. Aubrey Huff at second base. And Posey gets another piece. Well, that's a 90 mile an hour split. And to just catch a piece of that one, I mean, he's putting on a spirited at bat here. What, what Jimenez is throwing this guy. And, and I'll tell you the other thing, too. When you get a guy who's coming out of the minor leagues as hot as Posey, as an opposing pitcher, you want to throw a little dose of humility his way. And he gets him on a high fastball. Four strikeout for Ubaldo Jimenez. And he kind of ran up through the middle, and the payoff pitch is an elevator fastball right across the letters. But a good at bat for Posey in that he got to see everything he did. that Jimenez throws. Here's Benji Molina, three for 21 lifetime against Jimenez. Oh for four for Benji Molina yesterday. He's in a bit of a funk right now. On the ground to third, and it'll be Stewart who will make the play to end the inning. Giants leave Huff at second base. We will head to the third. 
answer our Valley View Casino trivia question. Last time Padres swept the Rockies here at Coors Field three game series in September of 2011. Can you name one of the three pitchers who earned the win during that series? Corey Lupke, Matt Litos, and Anthony Bass. Do you know any of those people? Do you recognize any of those people? You know what? Um, I would have been 0 for 3. Really? Yeah. Okay. Wow. I wonder if there are any bass in that little pond right there. I think there's some rainbow trout that live out there. That's beautiful. In the forest here at Denver's Coors Field. That's good bass. Luis Perdomo back on the hill. 38 pitches through the first two innings. And one Arenado leading it off. That one thrown oh. behind him. Arenado's go. going after him. And now we're going to fight at Coors Field. Padres have been hit the entire series. And Perdomo throws behind Arenado, and it's on. You sort of had to figure this may happen. Maybe not so much after the Margot last night, but the Renfro today. Yeah, got that right. Arnado has been pulled out of the pile. And he and A.J. Ellis are now trying to get at each other. If you think about it, if you're going to throw at one of the Rockies, sure. you would pick probably Nolan Arenado. Mark McGuire's Mark in McGuire his face. Right in his face. You know, I've always been a big proponent that if you're going to throw inside, learn how to manipulate the baseball and throw and hit your target. When you start going up around the neck and the head and the hand area, that could get really, really dicey. Things are picking up now. Just when they started to die down, A.J. Ellis came around from the back. The pile started to move. The Arnado McGuire conversation was taking place, and then all of a sudden, things heated up in the back. We've got a lot of baseball left here today. We're in the midst of the third inning. Arnado is still hot. Got him back down to the dugout, and it looks like this will break up here. And we'll see what kind of ejections we have here coming up. AJ looks rattled. AJ really looks rattled. Actually, he was on the ground for a while, A.J. Ellis. Threw the glove at him as Arenado was about to arrive at the base of the hill. He eluded the glove, but then went after Perdomo and AJ Ellis tried to cut him off before he got there. Did he connect with that right? Uh, it looked like it was grazing blow there. They've got a little piece of him. AJ Ellis on the side there I saw. And there is yeah, Josh Johnson was getting in the mix as yes, well. Yes, he One was. Of the coaches, yes. You know, this is where Mark McGuire talked with Mike Redman. And then Mark McGuire got into the face of Nolan Arenado. This was the pitch that started the brawl here in Denver. Right it, it, missed him, right? yes, it missed him, right? Yes, it did. It did. 
Arnado went right out there. But Black still doing a lot of the talking out there, the four umpires. And AJ's, he, he's in the scrub trying to separate him. And almost walking off the field, he has been ejected also. So the entire battery here for the Padres is going to be gone. Well, here we go. Buddy Bauman into the game now. And his first pitch is grounded towards third base. Going on the run in the dirt, and Hosmer can't make the play on the other side. Ian Desmond coming on to take over for Arenado, and he grounds one to third, and the errant throw from Corey Spangenberg. Let's see if Corey had a little bit more time because he threw this one on the run. Yeah, it looked like he had more time. Had a time to gather himself and maybe a little crow hop. Error charge to Spangenberg on the throw has Ian Desmond at first base. And Carlos Gonzalez coming up. Now there's action in the Rockies pen. Wonder if, is it possible that uh, Marquez got tossed? That's Sensatello warming in the pen. Soft toss to first and Desmond back to the bag. I mean, there'd be no other explanation to replace the starting pitcher. Who knows what went on? Down get in, hurt down in that scrum. Yeah, there are true. so many possibilities. That's true. Over again and back is Desmond. Hey, <laughs> Marquez was throwing the ball well. Side. Buddy Baum just back with the Padres. Last year got into 23 games. Runner goes, pitch swung on a miss, throw down, it's going to be close and not in time. Stole a base for Ian Desmond. So there are more Rockies than there are Padres. Perdomo and Ellis, the battery for the Padres ejected as we had anticipated. Arenado ejected as we anticipated. Marquez, the starting pitcher for the Rockies, ejected. And Gerardo Parra was ejected. Now, I did not see what he did. Here's a ground ball off the bat of Gonzalez into center field. Desmond being waved around. Here comes the throw from Cordero. It's cut off. And the Rockies have taken the 1 0 lead. So the stolen base paying dividends, paying off for Colorado as lefty on lefty here, Gonzalez. And Buddy Bauman misses with the pitch there on the inside part of the play. He wanted to go down and away, secondary lead. He is off and running. And with the way the outfielders play here and a good jump at second base, no chance of getting the cutoff by Hosmer. Trying to throw behind the runner at first base, Gonzalez. He is back safely. So one to nothing Rockies and here is Trevor Story now. Rounds it down the third baseline foul. So again two ejections for the Padres Perdomo and Ellis. Arenado Marquez and Para ejected for the Rockies. You know that one replay we looked at of the scrum it looked like Para was getting a little aggressive in there. A strike here to Trevor Story. Uh, 
Osmer holding on. Gonzalez at first base. That's ball two. Andy Bauman called up from El Paso. Made two appearances in El Paso. Won an inning in the third. Didn't give up a hit in his appearances. 30 years of age and joined the Major League Club last year, July 22nd. Ended up with two different stints in the big leagues last year for the Padres. I really like what Buddy Bauman has to offer. You know, he hides the ball well. He's kind of got that funky delivery. He's not afraid to throw strikes. Old opponents in 20 of 23 innings scoreless last year. He's not afraid. He's not afraid to pound the zone. And, and once again, it's not electric stuff, but he knows how to pitch with what he's got. They all pitch to Story. And it's fouled off. We'll do it again. So now here's the defense for the Padres with a new battery. You get Bauman in the game and you got Hedges doing the catching with Ellis and Perdomo ejected. Ball four, and Bauman loses him. First walk allowed by Padres pitching today. Visibly upset, Buddy Bauman. As soon as that ball left his hand, it was off the mark. Time to regroup. Mike Tockman coming up. Tockman struck out swinging in the first inning, 0 for 1. That was against Luis Perdomo. Perdomo ended up going two plus innings. Giving up five hits. Charged with no runs, didn't walk anybody, and struck out two. And ended up throwing 39 pitches. His 39th, the most controversial of his outing. Tockman gets a bun down. And going to first base, going to be Spangenberg in time with a Swahe covering the bag at first. Sacrifice is complete. Gonzalez to third, story to second now with one out of the inning. Well, perfectly executed by Tockman, even with Spangenberg in. Well, that ball looked like it was up against the lip of the grass there. Nice recovery by Corey there. Nice, smooth transition on the transfer to get that out. Second and third, one out, and Ryan McMahon. Big relief for McMahon. Last time up, got his first hit of the year after starting the season 0 for 13, single to center field. Back here, one and two. Well, we have seen some very nice relief work out of the Padres bullpen recently, just not this early. So, buddy, Bob, oh. make sure you've got some work to do. Uh, here he is in the third inning. And they need some outs. And once again, out in the bullpen, the ruckus, and then, you know. Swinging a foul tip for a strike three. Oh, no, he didn't hold on to it. He dropped it. 
So hangs here at two and two, staying alive. So you've got to get into that mindset quickly for Buddy Bauman. After what happened on the field, the ejection, he gets as much time as he wants to warm up to get hot. It's not like you've got time when the phone rings and you're warming up in the bullpen. Full count now, three and two to Ryan McMahon with runners at second and third, one out to run in. Rockies have struck first. Ball four and he loses him to load the bases. Second walk allowed by Bauman. So bases filled with Rockies one down and Tony Walters coming up. Darren Ballsley the pitching coach heading out to the mound. Well it'll be lefty on lefty maybe a little refresher course from Darren with Walters coming up to the plate. This seems to be looking at the actions from Darren kind of a little bit of pep talk because the last two times with those walks very very frustrated Buddy Bauman. Think of the situation at hand pitch by pitch here. That's part of being a reliever being part of a pitcher. Forgetting about what just happened your one pitch. From getting a double play. And getting out of this. Adam Simber is warming in the pen Bauman's thrown 22 pitches. A relief since coming into this game and a jam here bases loaded one out. Tony Walter fouls it back to the screen for strike one. Rounded into a double play in the second inning. So a lot of Bauman during the spring got into 10 games during spring training. So virtually a third of the games played during the spring. Opponent sitting at just 206 against him. Jumps ahead of Walters, one and two. See how Buddy kind of short arms the ball, kind of hides the ball, gets up on you quickly. And what I mean by short arm is like he kind of doesn't have a good full arm swing, enabling the hitter to see the ball a long time. Kind of short arms it behind him, brings it up back behind that cap of his, and then bang, it's out in front. Kind of a drop and drive delivery as well, too. He lowers his body on that back knee, breaks down on that back knee a little bit. There's some deception in that delivery. Foul back to our left, and it hangs at two and two. As I mentioned before, Tony Walters, Rancho Buena Vista High School, the same as Dave Roberts, manager for the Dodgers. His dad, Kelly, his mom, Debbie, and Grandpa John, they watch all the time on Fox Sports San Diego when the Rockies are playing here against the Padres. Lined into center field, a base hit from third comes Gonzalez. Story being waved around. It got by Cordero in center. Three runs in so far, and going to third base is Walters. The Rockies take a 4 0 lead. Got through Cordero and all the way back in center field. Walters does a nice job of that pitch up and away. Now this ball snakes on Cordero. Looks like he just came up with his glove. Let's see. Big hop. Yep, he came up. Came up on it. Everybody's off and running. Three run score on the play. It's a single and error on the center fielder of Cordero. Two RBIs on the play, and that's the end of the day for Buddy Bauman. Rockies have a 4 0 lead. Pitching change from Denver. This is a cooler, but this is a classic cooler. 
New Sun Country Classic Wine Cooler. This tastes dry and delicious. This is dry, but not delicious. This one's crystal clear. This one is not. This contains premium wine and real fruit juice. This does not. Unless you put this cooler into this cooler. Ta-ta. I was supposed to bring the cooler. You were going to bring the chips. Spilly, how many did you hit as a Rocky? I have no idea. 42, your top 20, your number 20. Because Blackman just hit his 30th, and he joined the top 30. So I'll be 21 pretty soon. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Yeah, probably. But you're in the top 20 right now. No, well, not for long. How about Giambi, though? Did you see that blue uh, elbow pad I was telling you about? The thing smelled awful. <laughs> All right, listen. In the interest of full disclosure, Spilly, how, how many times did you wear the golden thong? One time. I was one of the few major league players never to get a hit with it on. Well, Belt just got a hit in the vacated portion of the left side of the infield defense. The Rockies had the shift on, and Belt drives a single to left field. So he's aboard here in the fourth in front of Justin Maxwell. Who had the best record with the thong? Wow. Uh, I know Jeter was pretty good with it. I know Jeter wore it many, many times in New York. More information for the ladies, huh? He's got it all. Maxwell hit a two-run home run to deep left center his first time up. Pitch called to strike. He had been a little uh, south of the knees. He's 0 and 6 one. He's six foot five. Well, you know what? I, I'm watching him, and, and, and again, I watched him a lot uh, at a younger age. And this is not to take anything away from him. Both pitches he's hit have been sliders. And they've been flat, and they've been out over the plate. And, and Spilly knows what I'm talking about when you say slider bat speed. Yep. You know, if you're slowing it down, and I'm, this is nothing against Maxwell. This guy can hit. I mean, I watched him. He hit a lot of home runs. You said what he did in Houston one year. Is that you, you know, you got to be really careful and make him aware, I think, personally, of the sinker in. I, you know, and, and if you're going to throw the slider, well, you really got to stay on top of it and make sure you're taking it to that outer half of the plate. Because with his long arms, if it stays flat, he can get two or three inches off the plate. Well, let's see how he works here. He's got a traffic jam. First and second, nobody out. Double play candidate, Casey McGee. Well, he's done a really good job with it so far this year of being able to control that traffic. I think he's working, George, with better tempo than we've seen. And I, I really believe the game in L.A., even though it was a loss, was a growth moment for him. Well, it was. I'm sure it was. You know, in five-plus innings, got out of a big bases loaded jam. Adrian Gonzalez, I mean, big, big guy at the plate. Listen, every single start, every year you're in the big leagues, you, you, you continue to grow. I mean, I, you know, I know 10 years later I was continuing to grow, to learn something different. A grip that Steve Carlton showed me on a slider that was different than one I'd thrown the previous nine years. You learn things as you go forward. The minute you think you've got it all figured out as a player, you're in trouble. One and one on McGee. Bell to second, Maxwell at first. Outside. McGee looking down at Roberto Kelly. Roberto was looking in the dugout to get whatever was on or not on from Bruce Bochy. It's Roberto Kelly. Took over for Tim Flannery this year at third base. Flann now doing some television work for the Giants. Pulled to third. Dolan comes up with it. Runs to the bag. Gets a force. Double play. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable. Now who makes that play? Nobody. Nolan Arenado. <laughs> and he's in on the list. I thought, okay, he makes a great stop. He'll get the out at third. He turned into a double play. Now, Sean Dunson is their replay coordinator coach. Look at this. My goodness. Across the back. Beats him there. Got with decent speed. Then fires it to first base for the double play. My friend, I'm standing right over here. Casey McGee looks right over here and he goes, are you kidding me? <laughs> He's pretty good. 
Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You can't overstate how freaky good that kid is at third base. Right there, how many runs he saves you every year? They're going to walk around for this. They should. I mean, I'd like to go back and see that. Well, they've got runs but, saved and all those kind of things that he does. I mean, it's just phenomenal. Here's another look at this play. He thinks it's one a double, hopper, George. One hopper, you backhand the baseball, you get on top of it, you fire a perfect strike over to first base. And funny story with Nolan his high school is a shortstop. He didn't play third base. People are trying to think, all right, he's too chunky to play short. Where's he going to play? There are a number of guys. They've tried some teams. Don Welke was at, at that time uh, working for another organization. And, and Don said, Man, let's put a working out behind the plate. See if he can catch. Some people thought of that with him. And uh, obviously those people weren't right. Uh, but he's a pretty good third baseman, too, and they moved him over there. The thing about it, you know what? He just gets good at it because he works at it. When he takes ground balls, and I had a scout yesterday with the Minnesota Twins tell me, okay, it's a day to rest. He's got an ankle injury, he can't play. You know, or, excuse me, a, a hand injury in his wrist. He's going to have a day off. Well, still laying up in the locker room, getting treatment the whole time. He didn't take batting practice because of bad wrist. He came out and caught ground balls like this. He made plays like that for three groups of hitting, 45 minutes of I had the pleasure yesterday of listening to the Rockies broadcast and the Padres broadcast and Ted Leitner is like, don't hit it over to that boy over there. One out. <laughs> Ted Leitner, he's a treat in his he own He was a treat, and he's right. He, I think most guys in big leagues, when you hit the ball to third, you're done. You're like, don't hit it to that guy. I do not want to hit it there. <laughs> but you know what? Yeah, he took a double away from Begay and probably two RBIs. Uh-oh, this one's going to sneak through. Heskey's first hit. Cargo up with the baseball, and they're going to stop. That was key. Slamming on the brakes was Maxwell, who runs well. And that was all out of respect for Cargo's arm. Well, with a pitcher up, you're short your distance, too. You don't think he's going to hit the ball over your head. So when that ball's hit hard to the right side, Cargo charged, and he's got the... Not an easy play, but a play you're not going to challenge as a third base coach to challenge. He's in short left field, and he threw a bullet. I honestly think that if Morneau would have double clutched, they probably had a shot at third base because he got a long ways around it. Maxwell did, and then he dives back in. But as Justin caught that cutoff, he's double pump, and he couldn't get that grip on the baseball. Or because of that throw by Cargo, probably got to play at third. I'll tell you what, he wasn't Spilly all that far away from contacting Roberto Kelly, and if he did, he would be inning over. Inning over. Here's Blanco. He doubled his last time up. This is one of those moments. It's still relatively early in the game. Top of the 4-3-3 affair. Bases loaded. Eddie Butler got a bear down here. His next pitch number 57. Butler gets over, and Eddie with the jam shot. Blanco ends the inning. Nolan Arenado does it again with his glove. 3-3, go to the bottom of the fourth. Enchanting San Francisco. Look from across McCovey Cove. The Rockies ahead 4-3. to three. They scored three in the first inning. Highlighted by a Nolan Arenado two-run home run. They got an RBI single in the second from the guy who's leading things off here in the fifth, Trevor Story. Also an RBI infield hitting that first from Mark Reynolds. So here we go. Matt Cain to Story. And that catches the zone. 0-1. Story, Cargo, and Nolan. Oh, this is the exact part of the lineup you want to see, especially third time through against Matt Kane. Hitters are hitting 464 against Matt Kane, third time through the lineup. You know, this year against his fastball, the league's hitting 340. Kane, a three time All Star. Do you know, he's still, you'd never. Think this. Matt Kane has won 100 games yet. He's at 97 games in his career. And it, it's shocking when you think about it because you know, he started in 2005, got to the big leagues very quickly. You'd think he'd have like 130, 140 wins. But if you recall, 
he was he was like the hard luck pitcher in baseball. Oh. This ball's well hit left center field. Did he catch it all? Yep. Another home run for Trevor Story. His 11th. And it's 5-3. How about that shot? He was kind of out on his front side a little bit, Spilly. He had to reach for it. Man, that kid is strong. You talk about pitchers trying to make an adjustment against Trevor Story, working him on the outside part of the plate, going fastball away, soft away, trying to get him to roll over. You're right, he was out on his front foot. But guess what? He kept that barrel in the zone. That was loud off the bat, Drew. Man. This is AT&T at night, and he's going large fly to left center field. I'm telling you, he's special. Cargo drives this, slicing the left field. That's going to drop. Cargo hard turn, and he's going to end up at second with a double. Cargo two for three against Matt Kane. Vic Mazzaro is throwing now in the Giants' bullpen. We have some of the guys from the New Britain Yard Goats. Hartford Yard Goats watching this game, and they're watching their old friend and teammate, Trevor Story. Talk about strength. Matt Kane going for a slider off the plate. Yes, he's on his front foot, but look at where he keeps this bat, right in the zone. And that allows him to get the barrel to it. Out on your front foot, just because you're out on your front foot doesn't mean you're, you're an out. If you can keep your hands back, if you can keep the barrel in the zone, Spilly and, and you can still drive the ball out of the yard. I want you to describe that swing also because he unweights. A lot of guys who have a lot of pop, he unweights. Tulo used to do that. He unweighted off his backside. It happens. You, you talk about clearing the momentum or getting your momentum to slide your backside to slide it's not a bad thing especially on off-speed pitches if your hands stay back and your body comes forward it's okay as long as you're able to keep the barrel in the zone it's it's when you get happy it, your body's moving forward and you're trying to catch the ball out in front that you get the rollover here's nolan well you're bringing mass through the baseball all of your mass so talking about this back foot right here, you see it slide, all right? When it slides, it's not a bad thing because his hands are still driving through that back, through the baseball. Nobody out. Well, no one's got to tell himself that's why you get three. <laughs> He's behind 0-2 right now, gathers his thoughts. Yes, the dude is strong. Good cover by Nolan. Home run leaders in baseball. Nolan Arenado tied with Bryce Harper last year with 42. Cargo had 40. And Nolan with 12. Trevor with 11. And I know everybody back east is going to say, oh, well, it's Coors Field. Do your homework. Take a look. More home runs on the road for both of those guys. Well, I really like, well, I love both those jerseys. That 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 All Star game was yep. cool. See you in San Diego. This is what's different for me with Matt Kane. Look at the pitch Nolan covered. Those those last two are, are like eight, ten inches out of the zone. You couldn't cover that pitch three, four years ago when Kane delivered it, it right? Would, it would be right past you. It would be right, well past you. You'd be, you'd be walking, making a right-hand turn right towards the, the dugout. And Nolan gets it in play. But Ooh, a bad throw from Crawford, and now Belt trying to get Cargo. Great slide. A rare error for Brandon Crawford, and the Rockies have runners at first and third. Nobody out. 
That's a rare error for the Giants. The Giants have only made one error in the last 10 games. Well, they've played near flawless defense. Nolan out in front, hits the ball to shortstop where Crawford takes a peek to see where Cargo is. And short hops Brandon Belt. Cargo going, looking at that throw is almost like reading a dirt ball. Ball read from the pitcher to the catcher. And Crawford had way more time to be able to throw out Nolan. And then a smash up the middle for Para. Come on down, Carlos Gonzalez. Make it 6-3, Colorado. Boy, this is what you have to do if you're Colorado. Take advantage of not only every opportunity, but the rare mistake. The Rockies are doing that, and they've just knocked Matt Kane out after four plus. So Kane got here in the top of the fifth. The Rockies with 10 hits. Reynolds chance to do further damage here. It's the 6-2 right-hander Mazzaro. Oh, takes a pitch, it's in there for a strike. Mazzaro, a 29-year-old from Hackensack, New Jersey. Right across the Hudson River from Manhattan. Hackensack? Hackensack. I'm assuming that's where they invented Hacky Sack. Remember Hacky Sack? Were you ever in a Hacky Sack? I went to UCSB. You had to be. Well, Weiss is from Rockland County, where Walt grew up. He's right across. The Hudson from New Jersey. Actually, where Walt's from, he, there's a lot of kids who would go to school privately in New Jersey, right across the border. This ball on the ground to second, and it's Bobble. Look at that. Tomlinson doesn't handle it. The Giants having an awful inning on D. Bases loaded, nobody out for Tony Walters. What is going on with the Giants? It's not normal Giants baseball. Not at all. Well, for sure, you're supposed to get at least an out. Tomlinson starting to make the turn as, as if to try to make the double play. You see it hits him right in the heel on the Subaru Supermo. Always have to get one, Drew. Just get one. Don't worry about the double play. Now Tony looking for a ball. Well, he squared around for a moment. Looking for a ball he can lift. So far, Walter's first two at bats, he saw two pitches. You get a little jumpy when you're no not doubt. hitting. No doubt. No doubt. When you're in a little funk, you almost want to get in and out of the box as fast as you can. Put the ball in play, just try to get a hit. When you're doing really well, the game feels so slow. One and one. Arenado at third, Para at second, Reynolds at first. Walters fouled it off, and then the bat came out of his hand, and it literally flew over Chris Russell's head. Now the question from Robert is Nick Hunley ineligible for the game if he was in the starting lineup? Who would back up then? No, he's not. He's not ineligible. He didn't. He didn't play in the. He didn't. He never got in the game. So. If he's available, we don't know that. We're still waiting word as to why he was a late scratch. He'd be available outside. He 
you look at him with a quizzical look. He never. Yeah, I'm trying to think, though. It, the game started, lineup cards were already exchanged if it only was on that lineup card. Well, we don't know if he was. Yeah, exactly. We don't know if he was. If he wasn't, he could be right. Now, if he was on the lineup card and the game began, then he would be burned. He would be burned. Correct. Doogie, what happened? See, Christian Adamas back there, wondering to the question of who would, if that were the case, who would back up? Usually it's a super utility infielder. I don't know if Christian's ever had the gear on. Is that or Ryan Raber? This ball's pulled to the corner, and it is a fair ball off the base of the wall. Two runs are going to score. Reynolds to third on a Tony Walters double. Make it 8-3 Colorado. Boy, that has to feel great for Tony. Oh, there is not a better feeling in the world when you are struggling. And <laughs> talk about Tony's first two pitches of the game that he saw he put him in play. This one he waited and he fouled off pitches and he saw a pitch that he could handle. It was up in the zone. Hanging slider right down the middle. And with a nice quiet stroke, Tony Walters delivers a double. Oh, that has to feel awesome. Now the infield in, second and third, Russin at the plate, still nobody out. Chris pulls the bat back. He kind of showed bun. I don't think anybody was really buying into that. <laughs> Rockies can hopefully knock out the Giants here. I'm trying to get the infielders moving around a little bit by showing Bunn. But the way Chris swings the bat, let him take two good hacks now with a 1 1 count. Hey, we get tacos tomorrow, fans. The Rockies have scored. Seven plus. Don't forget to go to your participating Taco Bell locations between four and six tomorrow to get your Rockies Taco Special with Moss at Taco Bell. And back up the middle, Tomlinson makes that play successfully, and that's the first out. The Giants made only three errors all last season against the Rockies in nine games. They made two errors in one inning. Very rare to see this Giants team. They pride themselves on pitching and defense and timely hitting. We've seen some of the timely hitting tonight, but we haven't seen the pitching or the defense. Well, the Rockies last year scored seven or more runs three different times against the Giants here. Posey blocks that pitch 1-0. And in their first game at AT&T, and they're far from done here in the fifth inning. With two in scoring position and one out, they have an eighth spot up. I'll tell you what, I never feel comfortable with this Giants team, though. Even with the five-run lead in the fourth inning, well, still way too much way go left. Yeah, and, and it's not as if they're not swinging the bat. <laughs> exactly. They have three runs on nine hits. I'd like to see DJ get another base hit. So would DJ. So would everybody in that Rockies dugout right now. He's two for two, a double and a single. Walters a two-run double a moment ago. He does have a great attitude, Ryan. And he can play. DJ with another hit as you asked. That'll get one home. Walters will have to stop at third. He was hit so hard at the right fielder Blanco. DJ three for three, RBI number 10 on the year, and it's 9-3 Rockies. Reynolds getting high fives. Well, listen, I know that Kane's out of the game, but 
Mazzaro's getting hit just as hard. <laughs> well, and some of the runs that Mazzaro's giving up are Matt Kane. So Matt Kane should almost be done for the night with with his line. Yeah, that that uh, well that closed the book a moment ago on Kane. Four plus, he gives up eight runs. Seven earned. And that's a base hit. Into the gap in left center field for Charlie Blackman. DJ to third, and he'll hold there on the double by Charlie. Rockies have hit double digits. It's 10 3. Sixth RBI for Blackman. Dave Rigetti making his second trip of the inning out. Visited Kane earlier, and now he's going to visit Mazzaro. Giants fan let out a collective uh, in frustration as soon as Charlie Blackman hit this baseball, and it was music to my ears. Charlie Blackman just going down and getting the baseball. First pitch swinging, first and third. DJ going to third. Keep the merry-go-round going, boys. And that'll bring up the guy who started the inning with a home run, Trevor Story. Rockies have hit around here in the fifth inning. Don't hit. stop. DJ at third now, Blackman at second for Trevor with the infield in again. And this kicks away. DJ thought about it. Posey recovered pretty quickly. Well, here's Trevor Story's home run earlier in the fifth. Slider out over the plate. Just how strong he is. Man. Ball and a strike. The Rockies. Look at their box. The only guy without a hit, and he's not paid to get hits, is Chris Russett. Two for Story, two for Cargo. Parra with a couple. DJ's got three. RBIs, extra base hits up and down the lineup. Now this is where Story, as we know, strikes out at this stage of his career quite a bit. Find a way to get the ball in play. It's runners at second and third. You're up seven, but these runs still count. You still need to keep tacking them on. He gets it in play through the left side. Base hit. DJ come on down. Blackman moves 90 feet. And Story has a three RBI night, a three hit night, a two hit inning. 11 3. Crowd is stunned. They don't see the Giants lose here much. And they don't see the Giants get beat like this. I don't know about you, Drew, but I'm, I sure am enjoying this. I could watch this all night. I love it. You know, this is a this is a team that the Rockies get sky high for. Division team, AT&T Park, three-time world champs, and they're putting it on them. Great approach by Trevor Story. Put the ball in play. Two strikes. You're right. We've seen a quieter approach from Trevor Story tonight. I think it helps when you face a guy like Matt Kane that's not going to be the fireballer that's going to force you to stay in your zone. And he's carried that approach throughout three at bats, three quality at bats. Make that four. Seven in the inning for the Rockies. Cargo. 2 and 0 on Gonzalez. Nobody up in the Giants' bullpen. Right now, Mazzaro's just got to wear, wear it. it. You're yep. going to wear it. Tell you what, though, you think it's, it's easy. It's not. As a hitter right now, you can start to, you can get big. And so you have to try to keep yourself in that quiet zone where your where your brain is still waiting for that for that perfect pitch. Everything's working well for the Rockies right now. You put the ball in play, it's going to find a hole. 
but hitters in, in this situation, you start looking at the numbers and you see the guys on the ropes. You tend to take a big swing and you'll miss a pitch that if you stay in your lane, if you stay quiet, you can keep adding to your stats. 3-0. And Cargo takes a pitch high and they're loaded up for Nolan. This is something. Seven runs in the inning, 14 hits in the game for the Rockies. Nolan reached on an error, which was, was as big as anything in the inning. Crawford had a routine ground ball, just fired it in the dirt. One of the best fielding shortstops in the game. And to reiterate, they had only one error in their previous 10 games. They've made two in the inning. Oh, oh look out. And that'll force in a run. And Nolan not pleased. Buster and Nolan have had words in the past. Buster trying to tell Nolan that he wasn't doing it on purpose is what I'm assuming. When you say, well, there's no way it'd be on purpose at four a run. The only however part of that is the game has turned into a complete blowout. Mazzaro trying to get inside. You can see that sinker just runs away from him. Catches Nolan right under his under his bicep. Nolan doesn't like it one bit. And I don't blame him. And Buster's saying, I'm not saying anything to you. Just like he tells him he told him last year. Tough way to get an RBI. in the bullpen it'll be Derek Law Para had an RBI single a bullet up the middle that's about 20 minutes ago bases loaded one out eight runs in in the inning And the biggest cheer of the night here at AT&T. A fan has made a catch. It was a great put him, catch. Put him out in the field right now, <laughs> the Giant fans are saying. <laughs> There's not enough garlic fries in the stadium to make these guys happy right now. Two strikes on Para. Patrick, is, you're not alone. I saw a few Rockies fans before the game. Oh, two. That's up the middle. A base hit. And the round third. Here comes Cargo. No throw. Two run single para. How about a 10 spot in the fifth inning for the Rockies? Three RBIs in the frame for Gerardo Para. Well, and after hitting Nolan with a pitch, Gerardo Parra hits the ball right back at Mazzara that almost hits him. Sinker right back up the middle. Good piece of hitting. That's where you're supposed to hit it. Mark Reynolds swings and misses. 14 to 3. Think about when this inning started. It was 4 3. The Tight Giants game. had threatened every inning. They had chipped away. The Rockies had the quick 3 0 lead after one. The, 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 you can't even write a 10, I guess, huh? They didn't. That, that scoreboard wasn't manufactured to put up double digits in an inning. It's like a crescent boom.
two and one. The Giants haven't seen their dugout in so long they're going to need a map to get there. Matt Kane looking on. He could have showered and put on street clothes by now. On the corner, Reynolds didn't like it. Two and two. First and second. Still only one out. That was made by Chris Russell. Thirteen hitters have come up. Only one has been retired. Think about this. In three and a half games this year against the Giants, the Rockies have scored 37 runs. We have another note. This is the 145th game the Rockies have played. Oh, this man. ball's drilled deep left field. This is way back. It's off the base of the wall. It'll score one, and stopping at third is Para on the double by Reynolds as Nolan scores. It's an 11 run inning. And now Bochi has to come out. Tell you what. Mac Williamson did a good job because that shot off the base of the wall and almost got past him. He doesn't get his glove down. And it's going to be at least a triple. Wow, what an inning. And it's not over yet. Give me the sun. Give me the sun. Give me sun, country wine cooler. Give me the heat. Give me the treat. Give me sun, country wine cooler. It's not a soda. No, no, no. It's not a beer. It's a bottle of brand new cheer. My fifth inning box is an absolute mess, and I'm happy to report that. The 15th man to hit here in the inning, 15th man to hit, is Tony Walters. This is a Giants team that last week on the road gave up 12 in an inning to the Mets. Well, the Rockies could eclipse that. They have 11 with one out and two in scoring position for Walters. Derek Law's first pitch. That goes breaking ball for a strike. That's nasty. First pitch out of the bullpen. Throw a curveball. I like it. The number I was trying to give you is the Rockies have played 145 games at AT&T Park and they've only reached double digits twice before tonight. May 26 in 2001. That's, yep. for, that's for the game. They just did it in an inning. <laughs> I know. The other time was September 24th, 2008. unbelievable got several text people uh, asking is this really taking place at at and and it looks like they fixed the scoreboard well they can put two ones up yeah they just can put a crescent moon next to the one see they fixed it Eleven runs. Derek Law, twenty-five year old out of Pittsburgh. One and two.
Carr is at third, Reynolds at second. Reynolds in double figures in RBIs now with the two tonight. He's at 10. And Walters strikes out on a pitch away. A standing ovation in some portions of the ballpark. Yeah, they can laugh this one off. They've had so much success the last few years. And again, they came into the ball game tonight with. Yeah, that, there's the kind of success we know they've had. <laughs> they came into the ball game tonight at 15 and 14 in first place in the West. The Rockies right there at 13 and 14. So Chris Russin, he made the first out of the inning on a ground ball to second. I was in Las Vegas in 2011 on a rehab assignment and I was the second batter of the inning. First guy gets a base hit. I ground into a double play. Next eight straight guys get a hit. I, I'm the, you know, there's runners at second and third pop up. I made all three outs or at least was responsible for all three. Look outs. at this. This is going to be a two run single for Russin. You knew exactly that he wanted to get in on the act 17 to 3 as Russin rifles one to right center field his second and third ribbies of the season nice swing Chris Russin get that nice quiet load and shoot it into the outfield keep it going The only inning off the top of my head that I can think back and recall that rivals this one was that inning against the Cubs, oh, I don't know, six, seven, eight years ago, where it was extra base hit after extra base hit. And I want to say the Rockies set a National League record. 12 straight guys, I think, got a hit. We're going to look it up. That's the only thing I can recall that rivals what we've witnessed here in the fifth inning. And DJ hits it hard, but it's a Tomlinson, and the inning is finally over, and literally everybody, everybody at AT&T is now standing. They're cheering on the Rockies for the wonderful inning they just gave up. <laughs> what an inning for Colorado. Your basic 13-run frame. I'm not giving all the highlights. Suffice it to say, the Rockies did really, really well that inning. And the crowd very pleased with what they've seen from Tyler Matzik this evening. Going to the seventh inning, he's allowed two measly singles. They came back to back in the fifth inning. Freddie Freeman will lead it off with the Braves in the seventh and Evan Gaddis and Justin Upton. 62 pitches through six innings. Is that any good? And another first pitch strike. 17 of 21 now. First pitch strike. He's been sitting on anywhere from 93 to 96. And that's been the most impressive part of this and command of the secondary stuff too. I mean. You know, the fastball command is emphasized so strongly your first three years at the minor league level. Sometimes you lose that good slider, and it takes about a year to get it back. He didn't lose a good slider there. No, three pitches, go home. He's got it back. I mean, that's, Freddie, that's Freddie Freeman right there. That, that's a pretty accomplished hitter. Well, think about it. In his first at bat, they had an extended at bat, and that was the first time Freddie came to the plate. Fouled one right off of his shin. Then after that he struck him out with a hard slider on the super Mike Shaw super Subaru super mo good hard slider you get him to reach out front and not be able to keep everything intact nice job of pitching just short of spectacular tonight for Tyler Manson it has been impressive. Gaddis down the line foul. One ball, one strike. He just wants to get back, put his gear on early every time. First yeah, two at bats, that, two swings, two fly balls. And, and you know what, George? I'm glad you brought that up. That's where I give Mike McHenry a lot of credit. 
He'd swung and, and got decent wood on, on two first pitch fastballs in his first two ABs. So they started him out with a breaking ball. And this ball's hit well to center field. Stubbs will have room though. And for the third time tonight, Drew Stubbs catches a fly ball off the bat of Evan Gaddis. And that'll bring up Justin Upton. Wells Fargo customers get your two for one Rockies club level tickets today by going to Wells Fargo.com slash Rockies Wells Fargo Bank member FDIC. Upton had the first hit for the Braves, so line shot to right that glanced off the top of a leaping Justin Morneau, top of his glove. Ball and a strike. Look at that, 51 strikes, just 19 balls. And you're in the seventh inning with two outs. Well, that's been long overdue. Glad to see this for Tyler Matzik to be able to come in here and make the pitches that he has made. Uh, it's been a long journey since signing as that number one draft pick. And to get here and do this, there should be a lot of smiles, not only in his household, but here at the ballpark and on that third floor in the baseball operations office. One, two on Upton. And this ball is in the air to medium range left. And Dickerson has it. Another one, two, three inning. Eight in a row set down by Matzik. Six nothing Colorado. <laughs> Two hits yeah. through seven innings and no runs. I mean, I don't know what else you could want. This is uh, one heck of a job by this young left hander. Well, you never know. Walt may go out there. And he may tell Walt, "I got something left in the tank." He's not made a signal yet. Now he asked for the baseball. Big standing ovation. Listen. from this crowd here for Tyler Matzik, but guess what? He acted like he belonged here and belonged to throw seven innings to shut out baseball. It is time for our Kubota pitching performance. You knew this was going to be a great matchup, and it lived up to the billing. John Gray, five and a third, allows a run on four hits. And Clayton Kershaw still out there, though this is probably going to be his last inning. He's at 84 pitches. He gave up a home run to Nolan Arenado, who will lead it off here in the sixth. That home run from Nolan came in the first frame. It's 1-1. Andrew Tolles a home run for Los Angeles. Speaking of Tolles, he's now in center field for the first time this year. The only other guy to play center field other than Jock Peterson was the very versatile Kike Hernandez. So Tolles in center. Van Slyke is now in left. Round three, Arenado against Kershaw. Home run and a ground ball to third. And this ball lobbed it a shallow left, and it is going to drop. Lead single for Nolan. And well, a guy who's not as familiar with playing center field of late, especially in the largest expanse of outfield, he was playing exceptionally deep. He had no shot. No, none at all. And this is what I was talking about a moment ago with the, the switch and bringing Van Slyke in. I'm not sure Jock Peterson would have got to this. He plays pretty deep, too, but not as deep as Andrew Tolles. So you hit the 72-mile-an-hour curveball, a little light, a little lob into center field, checks up nicely. Tolles looking behind him to look at the wall and see how far he is. That, thought, that's, that's always a visiting team's problem. It, visiting outfielders always play too deep at Coors Field. So first, Rockies. Here's story. Trevor doubled to left his last time up. 
I was going to say it's the first Rockies leadoff man to reach tonight. Run on six hits. Clean defensively for Colorado. A run on just four hits for the Dodgers. They have not made an error. Story works underneath it. Chase Utley calling. April 10th, this is Monday, is Purple Monday. Download the MLB Ballpark app to check in for your chance to win prizes. Purple Monday, April 10th against the Padres. Mark Reynolds to the plate. Mark with a couple home runs already this year. said it a couple innings ago, Spilly, about you know, when Charlie, I actually just last inning when Charlie was at first base, really anticipate sliders and curveballs down in the dirt. It's the only chance you have to take an extra base on Clayton Kershaw. If you're, if you're considering moving up the base through, right. a, through a stolen base. And, and the way you do it, just don't take a very big lead off of first, so you, you're not leaning back that way. So once you see the ball delivered, then you can get your secondary. This ball hit high and deep left center field. Did Reynolds get it? You bet. Two run bomb. Mark Reynolds. Biggest sign has this been? They can't understate the value of Mark Reynolds. Home run opening day. Home run the other day when the Rockies needed it to right center field. And how big was this one off of Clayton Kershaw? I mean, it had that loud super sound. Probably about as high as it was far. Pretty accurate description. That was a towering home run to left center field. Talk about weight transfer, hands. Well, this is just in harmony. Everything together, and then to click it on the sweet spot. Mark's done a lot of those in his career. What a start for Mark Reynolds. Teasing Mark Reynolds earlier today. Relax. It's going to be exhausting. The type of games that Mark has played for just the first five days of the season. He's carried this team on his back. You have to ask him if he's icing his lower back after every single game. Not only Mark Reynolds, Gerardo Parra tonight with two outstanding defensive plays. This ball's well hit to center field by Parra. Tolls going back. This one's gone. Back to back. Make it four to one. The two early season offensive heroes for the Rockies. Afterthoughts perhaps through much of spring training. Mark Reynolds and Gerardo Parra. We're so happy for these two guys and what they've done. A left on left, doesn't matter to Gerardo. Two for three tonight, including this one. The bits, obviously, then look at him. Yeah. And just when like was that. The, when was the last time Kershaw <laughs> was taken back to back? You know, Dougie's fingers are flying on the computer trying to figure that out. And when was the last time he gave up three big flies in a game? This ball's well hit down the left field line. If it's fair, it's gone. Oh. It's like, it's like. Steven Cardulo trying for the trifecta. 
Kershaw has allowed 109 home runs in 10 years. That's it. That's it. 19 by the Rockies. That's the team with the highest total against him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was a great tweet. This ball unloaded to the gap in uh, right center, but Puig will cut it off. You see that tweet? That was a good one. <laughs> the new MPP <laughs> leaders. There it is. <laughs> Mark Reynolds, Gerardo Parra. Updated MPP. I, I like race. that, Andrew. Nicely done. Uh -huh. Nicely well played. played. But you know what? <laughs> Not far from the truth here early in the season. These two guys have exceeded I don't know if that's the right word expectations but just from where they were coming into camp to where they are now with the injuries they've stepped forward big time Garneau homered yesterday hey Spilly I want to get this out because you, you know it'll be twisted somewhat on the East Coast well he gave up the three home runs but it was at Coors Field all three of those jacks were the deepest part of the ballpark they're out of any stadium that has been designed yet Give him credit. They squared up Clayton Kershaw multiple times. It's not like he the broken bat just threw it in the outfield and flew out 420 feet. Based on Clayton Kershaw's reaction, he knows it too. Those were legitimate balls that were squared up. Ball and a strike on Garneau. Two and one. On pitch number 98. Grant Dayton, the left-hander up in the bullpen for the Dodgers. Two and two. Two two to Garneau. And he frees him with a breaking ball. The Rockies in the sixth inning play pepper with the seats. Arenado got it going with a single. Mark Reynolds launches a two run shot and right behind him, Gerardo Parra making four to one Rockies. We've been together so long because we're always in perfect harmony. Our favorite wine cooler, Sun Country. Our favorite flavor, Papa. It is. I thought it was peach. No, it's cherry. What about orange? Well, don't forget the original citrus. Sun I Country like Cooler in five flavors and three sizes, including the two-liter party size. So we don't agree about everything except the great taste of Sun Country. We think is a tops. So here we go in the eight. This is Yomer Sanchez. And this is pitch number 100. Out of the 100 pitches, 63 have been for strikes. Go along with the six strikeouts, nine ground outs for Kyle today. To right but foul. One and one. Freeland has primarily worked down in the strike zone. He's had a real good cutter. He's a fastball cutter slider. Got an occasional changeup. He's even kept that with a few times he's had to pitch out of the stretch today. Sanchez is behind one and two. And now you're, you're a raise in the crowd from an audio standpoint. Just got enough of it to foul it off. Ryan Hannigan's jumping around because that went off his toe. Once he fouled it.
Here's another one-two. And this is in the air to shallow left, and Paro lays out and makes the catch. Huey, he read it the whole he, way. He, he didn't did. get fooled by the swing, because it was a big swing, but he clearly was jammed. And it's hard as an outfielder when it's a big swing and you get jammed, because when you have a big crowd of 36,000, almost 37,000, you don't hear some of that ball coming off the bat. But he wasn't fooled, and then he timed his leap perfectly. And to Gerardo, he gives a big fist pump, and so does Kyle Freeland. Point at his teammate. Now he focuses on Narvaez, and that looked like a pretty good pitch. All three times a day a to, to, to Omar, he's been 1-0. But on the day, he's 14 for 26 first pitch strikes. And Narvaez a little tardy on a 94 mile an hour fastball. Freeland has maintained his velocity. from Kyle. Yeah, Kyle doesn't react. Again, it's where he wants everything. So close to the Subaru strike zone. Two and two. Get on your feet, everybody. Come on. Two, two. Overmatched on this fastball. Tardy on it. Bat comes loose. Mom Susan, his girlfriend Ashley. Willie Garcia in the double switch is the hitter in the pitcher spot. Garcia's played quite a bit in this series but going out to review a scouting report very quickly is Ryan Hannigan so nice to have a, a veteran receiver and a guy who takes such great pride like Hannigan back there and that's a strike and then you have Kyle following the game plan to perfection Here's the 0-1 on Willie Garcia. Moves him off the plate, one and one. And Kyle's probably pitched in more in this game than he has the, the last four or five games combined. I remember his previous three outings were not real strong by the standards he had set. Here's the 1-1, one, one, two and one. Now his pitch 1-13. Born and raised in Denver. Number one pick of the Colorado Rockies a few years ago out of the University of Evansville. Here's the 2 1. 10 0 Colorado. Here's another 2 2. He went. Strike three. Inning over. Safely through the eighth is Kyle Freeland.
got goosebumps. I know you do too. So, three hitters, three pitchers in this eighth inning. Rockies with two outs will have LeMahieu at the plate. DJ, two for three. RBI single in the third, double with one out in the sixth, and he would score the Rockies' second run on a double with two outs by Arenado. That's a strike. Jake Baird just recalled a couple weeks ago from Reno, their AAA affiliate. Down in, for the Aces, he was 2-0 and in 20 ball games, three saves. So here's the situation, boys. Barrett throws a fastball that averages about 95 miles an hour. Yeah. Where are the outfielders? Where's the left fielder? They're going back to that shift we saw in Colorado. And, and the, the other thing that gets me is where the shortstop is playing. That That's that, yeah, that's to, to protect against a triple. This ball's hit a ton to right, way back, deep right field, and off the wall and it kicks back toward the infield DJ on his way to third with a triple off the bat I thought he got Oppo taco again DJ's pretty low-key we're around him a lot but you know this was special eh? he says okay you're gonna play that way I'll still hit it that way over your head he thought maybe you can tell by his reaction. And I thought maybe, too, the way that wall comes back in and J.D. Martinez goes crashing into it, the DJ knows that if he gets to third, gets in there pretty easily. Now you're just a wild pitch away from being able to take the lead in this game. Of course, your open cargo comes through, but boy, what a swing from DJ. A single, double, triple tonight. This is Mike Butcher coming out. I, I don't, he's not facing, Jake Barrett is not facing Cargo. They have a lefty warming up in McFarland. And this well, is. Well, he's got to pitch to him now. Yeah, now that he came out, you're right. He has to pitch to him, so. I thought the big stall was going on, but when they run, they changed that rule. Yeah, right. You can't have the manager now run out. Now he's got to face his hitter. The car goes 0 for 3. A couple ground outs and a strikeout. Two out knock gives the Rockies the lead. Well, Rosales is a long way off a third, too. Why do you get McFarland up if you don't intend to have him pitch to Cargo? No idea. But see how far Rosales is off? That helps DJ get a good secondary lead. So if the ball's in the dirt, it doesn't have to go very far. Cargo's got a 2 0 count. Last six ball games, 10 for 19. Couple home runs. He's not thinking home run. He's thinking the ball hard somewhere, driving DJ. 3-0 with Arnado on deck. And he walks, and here comes Nolan, the RBI leader in baseball, who tied the game with a booming double to center. In the sixth. Third baseman, Nolan Arnado. I'm wondering here if you if you just put him on, kind of go the Barry Bonds treatment. And bring in McFarland to face, face Parra. Parra. What? That'd be really risky because then if you get a hit, you're down by two. I'm just saying that winning runs are already on bay. I'm just looking at it from Tori Lavello's perspective. I want Nolan at the plate right now. <laughs> and, and to me, from, from Lovello's perspective, you just can't do that. Hitting, as you guys well know, is still really hard. 
Nolan takes a strike. I just don't think you can risk being down by two. I I understand all of that. I, I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, when you go into a series, if you're looking at the Rockies, who are you going to say you don't want to beat you? The guy that's leading all the baseball in RBIs. 0 and 1, first and third, two outs. Maybe they're just pitching very carefully. Rocky's got a two out triple from LeMayhew. Cargo walked on four pitches. Two and one. Tell you what, Nolan's locked in at the plate. You can tell right out of the hand, both pitches, the last two, the slider and the fastball away. He picked him up, didn't he? Right out of the hand. And Spilly, you've noticed this. We talked about it a little bit in Los Angeles. Three times in this game, Nolan's really gone to the right field portion of second base. Yeah, he has no problem hit the ball opposite field. This ball high and deep left center field. Did he click it? Get out you of here. bet. Three run. Home run. Nolan Arenado. They messed with the wrong guy. Thank you for messing with him. What a ball game for number 28. 5 2 Colorado. You think it, Tori wishes he might have put him on now? You know what he's doing, right, too? There was a fan, right. there was a fan at that was barking at him when he was on the on deck circle. He was, he was talking to him the whole time. I was watching him. That's why he did that. Wow, you get a hanging slider, and he bangs it out of here. Mercy. You know what? Thank you, fan. You just poked the bear. Uh-huh. And as Billy was saying, he was locked in that hole at bat. He was sinking up the middle the other way, and then he gets a hanger and pulls it to left field. Nolan's still hot in the dugout right now. He loves it. Whoever was barking at him. Tell you what, Nolan didn't appreciate it, but whatever that, whatever he did, keep poking him. Spilly, let's go in. We'll buy that guy a ticket for tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put him <laughs> in the man. same spot. Hey, how about this, two guys? All five runs tonight with two outs. Para takes a strike, 0 and 2. Nolan's driven in four, and he saved a leadoff double from Pollock on an amazing uh -huh. play down the third base line. A couple of innings ago. So having hit on this on deck circle here in Arizona, it's very easy for any sort of fans down at the field level to start talking. And I don't know if somebody was talking to him early. Yeah, he maybe was. Maybe after the walk, they said they'd rather face you. I just saw a guy standing down there by that, by the fence. And the whole time, Nolan had his back, didn't acknowledge that he was there. But I'm sure he was just chewing on his ear the whole time. And he, Nolan, that temperature started to rise and get higher and higher. And then that's the best way to cap it off, though. Para goes down. The damage is done with two outs. Triple by LeMahieu, a walk to Gonzalez, and Nolan Arenado loses one to left center. 33rd home run, 123 RBIs, and he's still conversing with that fan. Love it. I've been into classic things all my life. Classic rings, hello. Classic clothing. Classic hairdos, classic good looks, classic news. Being such a class act, I must tell you about Sun Country Classic Wine Cooler. It's new, crystal clear, dry and delicious. Sun Country Classic. Hey, it's classy, just like me. Bear's got a big nose, doesn't he? But I love it. 
Angel Pagan, Brandon Belt, Gregor Blanco against the man who got the save yesterday. 39-year-old Rafael Betancourt. What a special save it was for Rafi. Last time he had to save was August 20th of 2013. Two days later, he hurt his elbow. And he pours that over the outside corner, strike one. Bergman for four, Oberg an inning in his big league debut, Hawkins a clean inning, Friedrich an inning, and now Rafael Betancourt. Face Raffi yesterday flew out to left field. And this is a flare to shallow left, and the Dickerson can't come up with it. That's the first base runner allowed this year by Raphael Betancourt. Yesterday for Raffi to step back out on a big league mound. Opportunity to save the ball game. And he nailed it down. Three batters, three outs. And he's been economical. Each outing. So Brandon Belt with Pagan aboard. Pagan has three of the six hits tonight for San Francisco. That court utilizing that changeup more. And his return from Tommy John surgery. Good pitch split, to get a rollover on. Split change. Rafi, two on the hill. Troy is not on the second base side. Well, they don't employ the shift as much. That just missed, two and one. Balls, two strikes. That was a fastball you just don't pick up. 88 miles an hour, and it caused the, the even the defensive swing from Brandon Bell. Again, De La Rosa started, went five innings, around 75 pitches tonight for Albuquerque. Pitched well. Should be on schedule to assume his spot in the rotation in five days. Three and two. Let's see if Bochy starts for Don here. I think he will. He did earlier in the game. Don, pretty good speed. Let's see if Rafi picks. 
Here he goes. Ball four. That's unusual. Rafael does not walk many. So now two men are on for Gregor Blanco and nobody out. The bloop single and the walk. Don't forget that the Giants still have Buster Posey sitting on their bench. Buster hiding behind the railing. Blanco, a ground ball to second, a single, and a fly ball to center field. There's a strike. This may be playable. A lot of times it'll come back and oh, oh my goodness, oh. did he catch that? He caught that. You gotta be oh. kidding me to get the oh they almost got a double play. What an oh. unbelievable catch, and Arenado's okay. You know what? And he's even getting some standing ovations from the Giants fans. That you was be remarkable. Just his back and the way it was torqued on that tarp. I'm fine. Is that what he just said? Oh. Folks, you're not going to see a better catch anywhere than what you see right here. How did he do that? <laughs> and then the throw yeah. from his knees on the tarp. There's not going to be a better no. play in baseball no. tonight, tomorrow, next the rest week. Of the year. I mean, that's Jeter-esque. He's, he's when running he went into full this... tilt knowing that he's going to run into the stands or the tarp or both. And in this case, it was both. And he gets a standing ovation from many <laughs> here in San Francisco. Unbelievable. All right, mail him the third goal, Glove. Go ahead, right now. I already start planning the ceremony next year. And I'm telling you what, it was a fairly close play. The ball popped out, but it was a fairly close play on Pagan at third. How about if he got the double play? That would have just been the cherry on top of the Sunday. Both you would have waved the white flag, <laughs> said, all right, your game. We'll see you tomorrow night. I'm still in awe of that catch. I'm watching it. I'm watching the flight of the ball thinking, is it going to stay out? Then all of a sudden I see a body flying on the tarp, and I'm like, he caught it. I was watching Corey in left field. Matt Duffy. I mean, that's worth another couple looks. He never had an opportunity to brace <laughs> no, himself. And then he didn't. has the wherewithal to, to turn around and throw the ball toward third. And he made an <laughs> accurate throw. It's like Gumby. Go get that uh, one. How come he's not making a play on that one? Like Inspector Gadget. You got to love this game. You won't see a better no. play. You will not no. see a better and, and play all year. I referenced You'll see some great ones. You Jeter. won't see one better than that. Remember when Jeter went into the stands, flipped over, came out with his face bloody? Yeah. Oh, and two. To right field, Cargo has it, and here's the throw to the plate. Pagan will score. And the Giants have ended the drought.
Well, just one. They had for, gone 18 innings well, without they'd, scoring. They had been 0 for 14 with runners in scoring position prior to that. But if you're Raphael, you'll trade that to still have the runner at first. Cargo gets behind the ball and lets it fly. Well, Bruce Bochy is going to play the Buster Posey card right here. He'll bat for Hector Sanchez. Two outs in the eighth. Posey three for seven against Betancourt in his career. Adam Adovino. Betancourt has a strike. Beautiful thing about Raffi. He can paint arm side and glove side. Doesn't matter. Do it with the lefties. Yes. Now he paints on that's, the glove side on the outside corner against the right-handed hitting Posey. That's been his M.O. for his entire career. Swung on and missed. It's 0-2. Paint the corner away. Go back out there. We'll run but on that fastball. That's some run. Buster was looking to drop and drive try to tie it up o2 fouled off Posey not starting tonight, his first non-starting assignment of the season. Game number nine for the Giants, 0-2. No hitter better in the second half of 2014 than Florida State's Buster Posey with 354 in the second half last year. Fourth in the National League batting race, Silver Slugger. One, two. Posey hit 277 first half last year. Solid but unspectacular postseason. Giants rode Madison Bumgarner to their third world championship in five years. One, two. Brandon Crawford on deck. Up, foul ground. It's going to blow way out of play. Nolan, where are you? <laughs> right? Fourth outing in five days for Raphael Betancourt. The Giants big bat at the plate Buster Posey two outs in the eighth in the air well hit center field Blackman leaps and makes the catch 
Charlie Blackman, Nolan Arenado take a bow. A run for the Giants, but the Rockies lead it three to one as we go to the ninth. Scooter has got a seven game hitting streak going 0 for 3. Well, Roush has been terrific. 11 ball games, 12. That leads the uh, their, their bullpen in appearances. One out. Dexter Fowler coming up. Roush in ten and a third is allowed four hits, one walk. You know, Johan Santana, who's on the plus side in this ball game, looking for his first win post injury. Six innings of shutout baseball, two hits, three walks, five strikeouts. It was a Rule Five selection. He was originally signed by the Houston Astros and then went to Minnesota. Inside on Dexter again, a Rule Five selection. And that rule goes way back in the game of baseball. Is minor leaguers with four years' experience left unprotected, not on the 40-man roster, can be taken by another team. And if they are, they have to stay on the big league roster with that with that new team for the entire year or offered back to the old team. And fifty thousand dollars will get you the player. If you have to give it back, you, it's twenty five thousand dollars if you if you want to send them out. You've got to be offered back to the original team. Santana was a rule five selection, so it got us thinking. You know, who are the all time great steals in the rule five draft. This is how far back it goes hack Wilson of the Cubs George the Dominion of slugger with a Hall of Famer. He was a rule five selection that's in there three and two amazing. Yeah. Monty Irvin Elroy face Roberto Clemente. Huh. George Bell Daryl Evans Jose Batista who's slugging all those home runs now for Toronto. 3 2 back up the middle and on through. A uh, base hit for Dexter. Just the third knock for the Rockies. Bobby Bonilla, the wild thing, Mitch Williams. Here's the swing. Yeah, nice job of taking that ball right back out of the middle. Big 6 11 guy on the mound tried to kick save. It didn't happen. And one more for you. Rule 5 selection. Josh Hamilton. Well, it was, uh, there were reasons behind that. A lot. You know, off the field reasons. Former number one pick in the draft by Tampa. Cargo, a single, a walk, and he reached out an error by Daniel Murphy. He has two stolen bases in the game. The Rockies can generate something against this Mets bullpen. We got a couple guys firing in the Mets pen. Matt Belisle's up in the Rockies bullpen. Two and zero. Oh. John Roush, George, you made your living in the bullpen. He's about due to have a clunker too. That's usually what happens. You run off about nine or ten of those in a row, then all of a sudden uh, everything starts backing up, and it's not a fun day. Three and zero oh with Tulowitzki on deck. Four pitches. Cargo walks. Here comes Tulowitzki. And Dan Worthen will go to the mound. 
just the second time in the game the Rockies have two men on against New York. Registration has begun for the inaugural uh, Rockies youth baseball camp at Coors Field. Roster spots are limited, so call 303 Rockies to sign up now. Kinoiski, five appearances against Mr. Roush. He's 0 for 5. Kadire's in a on deck circle. He's 0 for 3. Mets 3 for 12. Rockies 0 for 8. That's with runners in scoring position in today's ballgame. Strike got Troy. Tulowitzki line drive to center field. Ground ball to third. Another fly ball to center field. Great speed on base. If Tulo can hit a gap. Another strike. Troy didn't care for that call by home plate umpire Paul Emma. Both in virtually the same spot. They were in the uh, forward strike zone. Well, it's a pitcher's pitch. I mean, you're not going to do a whole lot with that slider. Two outs. Both runners move up. And Kadair will come to the plate. After walking cargo made three outstanding pitches to get to Lewitsky. Kadire 0 for 2 in a walk. Pitcher spot up next. He's on deck 2 and 0. He gets an opportunity that will get a rise out of this crowd. Tim Burdak is warming up for help. Two outs in the eighth inning. Two runners in scoring position. Kadire at the plate, the 2 1. Well, he painted that corner again. Well, he's turned into more of that. He was a very powerful pitcher in his younger days. I mean, 95 98 type powerful. Now he's developed a slow curveball from time in the American League along with a hard slider. I'd have a little gripe too if I was Kadire. That just missed at 91. Look at that. Not going to that inner half in a power area, is he? Keep no. everything on that outer half of the plate to make you beat me with something out there. And you, even with two strikes, you got to look out there. You're, you're protected, but he has not ventured in to any hitter yet. Slow curveball misses, bases loaded. Helm's going to be coming up, and Collins going to have to make a pitching change. Terry's not even waiting. There's Peyton Manning. He gets to root on his buddy here in a moment. So Roush walks off. Burdak will come on when we come back. Bases loaded. Todd Help representing the tying run. And so I knew how great of a city it was, and sort of what a great sports town it was. But uh, Todd, you know, Todd doesn't. 
I didn't have to make a hard hard sell. I mean, every team I was interested in, and uh, obviously getting to know the football side of it. So, but it's certainly it's nice having some friends here, like like Todd and you know John Lynch and Stokely, some guys that I knew you know prior to coming here. Peyton Manning has been around the club a lot because of his close friendship with Todd Helt through the years. He also got to visit with Ari Dickey, who he was in Tennessee with before the ball game. Eric Decker, if you missed it earlier, was taking batting practice. Wide receiver and quarterback developing a close relationship. And, and Derek sure. Decker would be smart to hang near Peyton Manning. The uh, drama right now uh -huh. is for Todd Helton. Pinch Helton. hitting. Helton in his career, 7 for 57 as a pinch hitter. But the National League, the Rockies are third this season. With an average of 308, 8 for 26. Burdak is in. Bases are loaded in the first pitch, misses ball one. Helton 0 for 3 in his career versus Burdak. I would assume that he would take the baseball to the outer half of the plate. That's been a pattern of the Mets pitching with men on base. Fowler, Gonzalez, and Kadir. And that's a strike, one and one. The Rockies this year, three for 11. Total 10 RBIs with the bases loaded. And of course, the big one coming the other day with the man on deck and Ramon Hernandez when he hit his seventh grand slam. One ball and two strikes. Decker's got the rally cap going. Triple and a pair of singles. 2-2. Two, two. High deep right field. Way back. We got ourselves a tie game. Pinch it. Grand slam. Number 17. First guy out of his chair. Step in yours. Had a way Todd help. Another grand moment for Todd Help. Home run number 351 of Helton's great, great career. 4-4 four, four game. And what did Peyton think? That a baby. I've seen it before. Rush just can only look. Well, you're not a, it's not a lonely fraternity. There's a lot of guys that have looked. That Todd Helton when he swung the bat and done the things that he has done in baseball. Or oh, look at that foot down, turn it on that inside pitch, just rotating everything and giving him what he had to do in his sixth career grand slam, second pitch hit. Home run. We have seen him his entire career. It's been our great privilege to call virtually every game he has played. And I'll tell you what, there's a curtain call for a man who hates talking about himself. Yes, he does. George, I have goosebumps, and I know it's April 29th, but that was another special, special moment. I don't know how this thing will turn out. 
but man, that was neat. That was really neat to watch Todd turn around and perform like that. It reminds you of some of those great moments in 07 off Saito with the walk-off home run. Those kind of things and moments and excitement that he's bring, that he has brought to this organization and this community and this state, the game of baseball. Then he had to go down and ask Trace, hey, do I got to go play defense too? <laughs> I think he'll get my glove. Bobby Parnell, oh, by the way, is now in the ball game. Burdak quietly removed. Well, this big crowd was going nuts. Now Ramon Hernandez at the plate. Why not go back to back, just take care of business? That'd be nice. That was the sixth pinch hit grand slam in Rockies history. The first since 98. And former catcher Jeff Reed did it. One and one. Todd Helt off the bench, pinch hit, grand slam. One and two on Hernandez. What an April for 17. And Parnell strikes out Hernandez, but it's a whole new Sunday afternoon at 20th and Blake. Two outs, bases jammed, Todd Helton at the plate. Boy, did he ever deliver. 4-4 as we go to the ninth. I used to be frightened by all the wine coolers I saw. I was scared I wouldn't pick the right one. Luckily, I did. It was the most refreshing one of them all, Sun Country Wine Cooler. You see, Sun Country is a blend of premium white wine and real fruit juice. That's what gives it its great taste. Sun Country, say, give me the real juice cooler. If you don't say Sun Country, you'd better sleep with your lights on. <laughs> Rex Brothers will pitch the eighth inning. Horse Crawford and Blanco, two of the three are lefties. The first, obviously, is a big, strong right handed bat in Morse. Native of Florida is Michael Morse. And a fastball at the knees for a strike. Morse, a base hit in the fourth, one for four. Or excuse me, one for three. The two strikes. Well, the Rockies in the ninth inning. We'll get another look at Sergio Romo. DJ LeMahieu will lead it off. Then the pitcher spot is due, followed by Charlie Blackman. He's trying to put together another rally. The first things first, you got to get through the bottom of the eighth, and that's strike three. See you later. Morris gets pink slip, one out. Tomorrow is going to be an interesting day for the Rockies. You'll have the MRI back on Troy Tulowitzki, get a feel for the extent of that injury and how quickly he can return. Good pitch. Slider with considerable depth and it's 0 and 1. 27 year old Brandon Crawford facing the left hander Rex Brothers.
And it's 0-2. Crawford playing for the team he rooted for growing up. He went to the Bay Area in Pleasanton. Went to Foothill High School and then went south to UCLA. Drafted in the fourth round by the Giants in 2008. After his career with the Bruins. Asking for an elevated fastball. Well, oh, how about man. one down the middle? And that freezes yeah. Crawford just like it froze Morse. At six pitches, six strikes. Uh, good slider right there. Threw it at it with some velocity. Looked more like a true cutter. Reverend Brothers, last couple outings, been special. Gregor Blanco. There's another fastball. You need a gift for dad, the MLB.com at bat app and subscription to its premium features on his favorite smartphone or tablet are perfect Father's Day. For more details, visit MLB.com. The 0 1, and it's 8 for 8. Brex Brothers is 8 for 8. 8 pitches, 8 strikes, and it's 0 and 2 on Blanco's 2 for 3 in the game. And he yeah, went. Man. That's as good an inning as you could have. Brothers on 9 pitches. Strikes out the side. Morris Crawford Blanco. The Rockies will face Romo in the ninth down a run. First of all, the Rockies have gotten after Sergio Romo. He didn't want to face the Rockies. Look at those last three outings. Five uh, runs wait. last night. May 20th, a couple runs and a blown save. And the Rockies got him back in late April. Leading things off, DJ LeMayhew, and he grounds the short. The good news is, look who's coming to the plate. And the good news, he's obviously feeling pretty good because he went down and swung the bat uh, down in the cage right behind the Rockies dugout. Now, if he reaches, I'm sure you'll get a pinch runner for him. But he has great numbers, as you just saw, against Romo. This isn't right. They're booing Troy Tulowitzki. This is hometown. Come on now. So Troy pinch hitting. With one out. He started the rally last night with kind of a punch single on a slider off the plate, just protecting. Single to center field. Culberson replaced him. That's where he hurt the toe. And that's 0 and 1. Blackman on deck. Kind of interesting. I didn't know what the reaction would be for Romo after giving up five runs last night. And when he jogged in during the commercial break. Nothing but cheers. And, yeah. and that's the way it should be. He's saved 20 games for them this year. 20 of 23. Pretty good history. He hung a slider there. Troy got one. Just missed it. Arias on the line at third. In the outfield, particularly in left, exceptionally deep. It's a hanger. Yeah, and his slider here didn't make it to the outside part of the plate. Forty one thousand seven oh four two hundred and eighty third straight sellout making a lot of noise two strike count on Troy fastball and it's hit in the air to center field Pagan has room Charlie Blackman with two outs.
Charlie a single and a double in the game two for four. He also lined into a double play. He has swung the bat well tonight. He swung it well all year. Getting a foothold to face Romo. Second fastball Romo's thrown here in the ninth. One to two to Whiskey popped up on all sliders prior to that. Behind in the count, one and oh, and Blackman with a fastball. And now Blackman looks back as if to say to Chris Siegel, you kidding me? Well, that's the worst part about it. You get a pitch like this. That's, that's awful. Out of the zone and down. Don't get caught up with the crowd and caught up with the situation and make a call like that. It's not easy calling balls and strikes. I wouldn't suggest that it is, especially as hard as these guys throw and with the movement they throw. But that was that was poor. Two and one. Barnes on deck. And that's going to be a base hit. Maybe more and it one. may be two. Blackman wide turn and we'll have to hold it first. So Charlie keeps it alive with a two out knock. Third base hit and five trips for Charlie Blackman. Well you knew Romo was going to stay away George. And sure he was but Charlie able to just throw the bat at it. It was a ball. It was off the plate but Charlie good job of dumping it into left field. Sometimes when a team has your number it's hard to figure out when they hit the nasty pitch for a hit as well as anything else. Speed at first Barnes at the plate. 0 for 3 and a walk. Here's the slider. Now yeah, easier said than done, but think right center field on that slider. If you try to jump out too quick and pull it, that's when you're going to get in trouble. The soft ground ball to shortstop. This fastball will not get by you. It's 82, 86 to 88. is now with that hit for what it's worth produce one more knock than the Giants 11 to 10 but they're down 4 3 with two outs in the ninth. Barnes this is going to drop and Blackman's going to go first to third it got by him Blackman will score Barnes may have a chance to score Stu Coles going to send him Brandon Barnes coming home throw is not going to get him and the Rockies have taken a 5-4 lead. Unbelievable. Second time in 10 days we've seen Barnes circle the bases. The dive by Pagan who has played a shaky center field the last two days and it rolled all the way to the deepest portion of this ballpark. Yes, it did. It's going to get all the way by him when he comes after it cleanly by him. And Barnes comes up with the home run. An inside the park home run. And Barnes, who can really run well, turns it on right here. The only thing he can do now is pick up Stu Cole and head for the house well ahead of the throw from the outfield. Unreal. Simply, utterly unreal. Barnes with his second home run both inside the Parkers and this one gives the Rockies a 5-4 lead two outs nobody on Romo's a pitch away from shaking hands 
Low on Dickerson. And it's one and one. Cole never stopped waving, did he? Never stopped one time. He just kept on running with him, wanting to make sure the throw doesn't beat him there, and it doesn't. That's a happy outfield right there. Blackman, Barnes, and Dickerson. Look at that dugout. They were going crazy in the dugout, as they should be. Dickerson drives this ball to deep left center field, and it is tracked down by Blanco. The Rockies have done it again. They've rallied in the ninth against Romo. Four appearances by Romo this year. The last club he wants to see. The Colorado Rockies. Colorado up eight to nothing. John Gray looking for a complete game shutout and trying to set a new Rockies strikeout record sitting on 14 as we go to center field. Here's Jenny and Corey. Yeah, what a special night. Sometimes when you come to the ballpark, it's all about being black and white. Tonight, it was all about being gray for John Gray. So many milestones that he has set tonight in Rockies franchise history. Very special ones indeed. You mentioned the 14 strikeouts. The first starter in Rockies history to reach 200 career strikeouts in less than 200 career innings. It's pretty impressive. He's really had his slider working. But you know what, Jenny? I don't think that's been the most important pitch that he's, that he's thrown all night. Can't wait to hear about that. Coming up in the Toyota Post Game Show, guys. It's already down. You can't even get your top goal in in time. One pitch, it's out. The Wolf of Blake Street. I love this. 14 strikeouts. Ties the Rockies single game record. Hopefully he can rewrite it here in a moment. First start in Rockies history to reach 200 career strikeouts in less than 200 career innings pitched. And he struck out six straight at one point tonight. That's a Rockies record. Four in one inning. Tied the mark. It's a major league mark. Tied. Bruce Ruffin did the only other time in franchise history. This is Adam Rosales. It's the pinch hitter. This is the pitcher spot now where Will Myers used to be. The 1 0. Swung on and missed. It's 1 and 1. Sixth pitch of the night now. Two and two. Career high for John Gray's 115 pitches. Gray was helped out in the sixth inning when he had seven pitches. You wonder if he's aware of it. Oh, he's aware. He's not of the record, but he knows what he's doing tonight. He's in that virtual reality thing. See you later. There it is. A strikeout of Rosales, a new Rockies record. 15 strikeouts tonight for John Gray. He knew it. Watch his reaction. Boom! It's howling right there. Started off first pitch of the game at 95 miles an hour. He's had it 10 the entire night. The aggressiveness. Explosion on that fastball. If you're going to break the record, might as well keep adding to it. Well, Ryan Schiff has come up three times and he has struck out all three times against Gray. 0 and 1. There he is by himself past the late Daryl Kyle. John Chacon, who Baldo Jimenez had struck out 13.
Here's the 0-1. Derby slider, it's 0-2. 34 plus thousand, almost 35,000 on their feet. Summer howling like my partner. How can you not? Come on, John, one more. Blows doors off. Here's the 0-2. Fastball at 96 on his 110th pitch of the night. I like the smirk right there. He knew that pitch was by Shim. Fouled it off just enough. Slider down and in. Why not? Here's the 0 2. More of a curveball on the back door. He missed. Here's the one two. That's the adrenaline rolling through his body right now. Just have to learn how to harness it, take that deep breath, focus in and drive home one more pitch. One two. He's got it. 16 strikeouts. What an extraordinary performance by John Gray. Complete game shutout. As dominant a nine innings as you will ever see. Wow. The Gray Wolf. The Gray Wolf is howled. Talk about a big time performance and a big time finish. One, two, three in the night, two more punch outs. Give me the sun, give me the wine, give me some country wine cooler. Give me the fun, give me the wine, give me the real juice cooler. Don't give me heavy, just give me light. All we want is a taste that's right. Give me real fruit, give me white wine, give me great taste. Give me the sun, give me the water, give me, give me, give me, give me, some country wine cooler, the real juice cooler. So A.J. Minter with the Rockies down 3-0. The rookie looking for his 12th save. Cargo will lead things off. No shock, Minter, big fastball, 97 miles an hour, has a changeup to go with it. That's a lethal combination. But his best secondary pitch is a slider. He'll throw it about 48% of the time. So you have 97 mile an hour fastball, and he goes slider majority of it. One and one. Upstairs, two balls and a strike. Well, Rockies trying to duplicate Spilly what they did on Thursday evening. Rally in the ninth. We were down three to two in the ninth on Thursday. Rallied for three, one five to three. Should be a little bigger hill to climb. Down three nothing. Not impossible. Three and one. Especially if you get a free pass from Minter. Chase one. 
But 97 miles an hour, you're trying to get started. You're, you're still looking for a pitch. There's a couple pitches on the outside portion of the plate that have gone against Cargo tonight. I always remind people, you have to make that decision when the ball leaves the hand in less than four-tenths of a second whether to swing. Camargo throws out Cargo, one out in the ninth. Well, Brian Snitker's coming out along with the trainer to come see him enter. It seems to be like they're looking at his finger. So I guess much to do about nothing one out and that'll bring up Nolan single back in the second inning one for three and the Rockies been limited to five hits tonight two are the infield variety stories in the fourth Charlie's in the eighth the only extra base hit was David Dahl's flare over Camargo's head at third I think the Hardest hit ball was Ian Desmond in the second inning, a line drive to deep left center. That's baseball on a night prior where the Rockies scored 11 runs on 16 hits 24 hours later. They don't have a run and just five hits with one out in the ninth inning. The Braves have pitched extremely well tonight. Fulton Evich was fantastic. Venters and Winkler found their way out of it. I mean, it is pretty remarkable when you look at both sides. It's come down to a handful of pitches. That is on one hop to Albies. He'll throw out Nolan. Two guys. Trevor Story, last hope for the Rockies to keep it going. Seven misses down low, ball one. This ball's driven a left field and deep, and it is going to go off the base of the wall. Acuna is going to throw it back in, but it's a two out double for Story. Another multi-hit night for Trevor. We'll bring up Dahl. And enter goes with the looks like a little bit of a cut fastball in. Trevor pulls his hands in nice. Acuna almost made a play on him. Almost caught it and then almost throw, threw out Trevor's story at second. Tough at bat for David Dahl. Minter is holding lefties to a 190 batting average. Well, 
One strike on David. Double and a couple of strikeouts tonight. Somehow he could reach. Desmond would represent the tying run. And this is line to center field. He will reach. Story will come around and score. No, he won't. He'll stop at third. Because his run is not important. And he threw on the brakes late. So it's first and third, two outs, and Desmond will get a chance. Good swing left on left here, Spilly. It was a good swing. A little surprised Trevor wasn't able to score on this, but people respect the arm of Ender and Ciarte, Gold Glover and center. You do not want to run yourself out of a game, especially down three runs. You respect the fact that Stu Cole is saying, nope, I don't care about the shutout. I want this team to win. Line out, strike out, hard comebacker for Desmond tonight. Ball one. Gerardo Parra, if Desmond were to reach, pitcher spot due next. has been out of pitch he can handle. We've seen him handle that fastball down and into him. Just off the barrel. Two and one. Winter, a former Texas A&M alum. Look at this, Drew. He only pitched 60 innings in the minor leagues. He had Tommy John back in 2015, but only 60 minor league innings throughout two years of professional baseball pitching. Two and two. Well, you know, mid to upper 90s is going to be mid to upper 90s. You might as well throw those bullets at the big league level, right? And the Braves have protected this guy. Try to give him a couple days after every outing he has. Two and two with two outs, two odd. Three and two. They often compare A.J. Minter to a left-handed version of Craig Kimbrell from a rookie of the year that was here for the Atlanta Braves. You get a setup. Big Saturday night crowd standing. Desmond trying to put them in their seats. Two out double by Story, two out single by Dahl. Here we go, 3 2. Line to yes. left into the corner. One run is scored. David Dahl will get a green light. He'll come home. Ian Desmond comes through, and he's in scoring position at second. A uh, two run, two out double from Desmond. Gotta love it. Seven RBIs the last 24 hours. What in a bat for Ian. Felt like he was having, he had good looks at his fastball. He got one, three, two. Everybody on their feet. Yanks his hands in, saw the natural cut. It's gonna be easy for David Dahl to score. Rockies are in business. Minter at the mound. The Rockies will have Gerardo Parra to pinch hit. Now Gerardo 
and has been great all year with runners in scoring position one of the best in the league but he's hitting only 188 left on left the Rockies do not have a right handed option they used Garrett Hampson and Chris Iannetta in the eighth inning all year we've been talking about it you got to love the fight of this club. Next to nothing happening offensively all night. And now all of a sudden with two outs and nobody on, they've rallied for two and a base hit with Desmond Speed and all likelihood would tie it. Outside. David Dahl came through with the very difficult left on left. Dahl was hitting 132 left on left at 38 bats. It's Gerardo Parra's turn, another tough matchup. I think 188 against lefties, 16 for 85. Parra, base hit left field. Desmond coming around third. The Rockies have tied it up. Gerardo Parra coming through. How do you like this two out rally? I love it. Are you kidding me? Two outs, nobody on. Trevor Story, David Dahl, Desi, and now Parra. Are you kidding me? Four straight hits with two outs and nothing going on, but the Braves count down at the post-game concert. Off the end of the bat, the natural cut from Minter's fastball. It almost works out perfectly for Gerardo. If he barrels that up, Acuna might have a shot to make a play. Awesome stuff. Story, Dahl, Desmond, Gerardo, Para. <laughs> and now they'll come and get Minter. Bring up LeMayhew. DJ's 0 for 4. He faced Jackson on Thursday and had a base hit against him. Strike one on DJ. Luke Jackson in his second year with Atlanta. With the Rangers prior to that. This ball's well hit center field. Long run for Inciarte and Go. it is gone! DJ LeMayhew! How do you like that? Oh my gosh! How? Tenth home run of the year for LeMayhew. Eight of them out on the road. And many of those ten have been huge. Like the one he just hit. Wow. The last 30 minutes of this ball game with two outs in the Rockies, it's just, you don't expect to see this. That's a hanging curveball. DJ going big fly to center. How do you like me now? Well, if you thought it was quiet in the bottom of the ninth after the Rockies scored, now it's a cathedral. Sunday Mass. The Rockies are presiding. This ball's launched to deep center field also. And again, playing chases in Ciarte. And Cargo watches Buddy throw it back in. It's a one-out double. Another curveball up in the zone, and Cargo squares it up. Inciarte giving great chase. He's as good as a common center field at running perfect routes. That's a perfect route towards the baseball, just out of his reach. 
What a swing of the bat there. Now the Rockies trying to add on. This is up the middle. This will do it. Cargo cuts the bag at third. He'll score easily. Nolan makes it a two-run game. 5-3 Rockies. And the Boo Birds raining down here at SunTrust Park. RBI number 85 for Arenado. A whole lot of nothing for the Atlanta Braves tonight, courtesy of that man. And we go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Martin Prado, the leading hitter in baseball, then Chipper Jones and Brian McCann. Two, three, and four in the Braves lineup, and the first pitch is in there, strike one. Prado tonight, two walks and a strikeout. He was caught looking in the sixth. That was the 115th pitch of the night by Jimenez. And I will assure you he doesn't feel a thing right now. So much focus after going to the stretch at the start of the sixth inning. He has retired the Braves in order three straight. Defenders on the balls of their feet. The 1-1, one, one, and that just missed. 2-1. and one. Thirty-two thousand six hundred and two are witness to this gem, and this is a pop fly to Clint Barmis. One out in the ninth. You know, with all the walks early, George, the fact that he managed he's had 118 pitches here with one out in the ninth is really impressive. The testament that his last walk came uh, as a leadoff walk in the fifth inning. Then he retired those three in a row. So ever since, uh, things calmed down after early on in this game. Here's Chipper. Ball one, Jones. Grounded into a 3-6-1 double play to end the first. He walked leading off the fourth and was balked to second and moved to third on a fielder's choice. That's as close as the Braves have come to scoring. He had a fly ball to center field in the sixth inning. Ubaldo Jimenez raised a Rocky, a native of the Dominican Republic. Here's the one out. Just off the corner. Jeff Kellogg gave it a good long look. Two perennial all-stars, the one at the plate and the one on deck in McCann. Good swing there by Chipper. Still 97 miles an hour out of the hand of Ubaldo Jimenez. Fans looking out of the ballpark say, well, the adrenaline's pumping, which obviously it is, but we're accustomed to seeing him maintain 97-98. He asked for the changeup. In the air, center field. Gonzalez will glide over. There are two outs. And it'll come down to Brian McCann. And Ubaldo Jimenez and Rockies fans are standing. And Atlanta Braves fans who know this sport so well also standing in appreciation. You bet. Two outs in the ninth. Four time All Star Brian McCann. And that's in there, strike one. Curveball strike one, fastball 97 miles an hour. See if he goes with a changeup. Ubaldo used it to get Chipper Jones. The 0 2. 89 mile an hour slider.
The dugout is anticipated as much as everybody in the stands is watching at home. Here we go. The 0-2. And again, it's wasted by McCann. Outfield straight up. Infield basically straight up for McCann. Here's the 0-2 again, and he spiked that in the dirt about 50 feet. One and two. 127 pitches in. That's the most, equals the most he has thrown in a ball game. That was in June of a year ago. He's got the sign. Here's the one, two. Ground ball to second. Barmas to first. Ubaldo Jimenez has no hit. The Atlanta Braves. The first no hitter in Rockies history. After hours are my favorite hours. I live for the night, darling. In fact, I only recently discovered the sun. <laughs> sun Country Wine Cooler, that is. It's fabulous. Premium wine, real fruit juice, together with a couple of friends, and you've got a night to remember. Sun Country say give me the real juice cooler. Want to have fun? Well, Grace is all right. Just put some sun into your night. <laughs> Four to one, San Francisco, bottom of the 14th. The Rockies need base runners and plenty of them. They'll begin with Dexter Fowler. Brandon Metters continues on. This will be his third inning of work. The Rockies haven't done much against him. One hit in two innings. He has struck out two. And Fowler takes ball one. Dexter is 0 for 6 in the game. Two and up. Oh, Just caught the corner. It's two and one. Chris Ionetta has a bat. After Barmas comes Gonzalez, and he can't swing it. It's three and one. The last decision Jim Tracy can make, George, is depending on what happens with the first two hitters, when do you go to number 20? Mm. Fastball down low. Well, I think if the first two guys get on, then you got to go. Well, to him. then you go to you him, obviously. To. But yeah. if, if one gets on and, and there's one out. I think you still have to because Gonzalez can't swing. Yeah, you're probably right. Oh, boy. And that's all you need now. Is that's an ankle bone. Right off the knee, I'm being told out of the truck as they looked at it on a replay before it got uh, back to us. And you wonder why managers just hate extra inning ball games. No, oh, like right off the point of the knee. That's all you need. Going to the Dodger series if if that's an injury of any significance, you potentially without Fowler and Gonzalez to begin things. Uh, particularly when you know, I mean, 99% of his games is late. You hope more than anything, it's a pain thing 
as opposed to an injury thing. And when you foul a baseball, it's coming in at 90 miles an hour off your leg. You see guys go down for a while and you know, eventually are able to walk it off. But he hit in that, you know, in that awkward spot, you know, bone, baseball to bone right on the kneecap. And I don't know if you're at home wondering, is that the same knee that he ran into the wall? I'm trying to remember, George, if it was the right knee or the left knee. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and swing the bat. I mean, uh, what else he turned to anyway? Fog? I guess he'd be the guy. Oh, thanks. 3-2 count. So, I mean, uh, yeah, he's got to go up there and swing the bat. It's just a lot of concern that there's not something really bad there. I mean... Mark Stout seems to remember that it was his left knee that he hurt running into the wall, and he just fouled it off his right knee. Three and two on Fowler. And time is evidently not. Uh, in. Yeah, that's weird. Fowler had just stepped in. Metters almost quick pitched him. Ball four. Dex uh, semi jog, semi limps down to first, and that'll bring up Barmas. George failed to come back here and overcome a three-run deficit. They're going to lament three unbelievable opportunities in the ninth, tenth, and eleventh that they could not come through in. Ionetta in the on-deck circle for Gonzalez. Justin Miller, the right-hander, who came in the other night and got smoked. I mean, he gave up a ton of runs against the Rockies in the ball game when they exploded in that one game. But, uh, Miller was able to get no outs. I mean, it wasn't pretty. That's why Bruce Bochy, not because of Miller, but because of this ballpark and the respect he has for the Rockies lineup. I'm sure he's pleased he has a 3-1 lead. Or 4 1 lead, but he's not resting comfortably. Can't. Ball three. This is farther than Metters has gone all year. On three occasions, he's worked two innings. This is his third inning of work. His next pitch will be number 41. How much you could do now, but sit back and watch. Barmas took another strike. It's three and two. And it's a pop up. To Velez. Chris Ionetta, the last player on the Rockies bench, will come up. You know what, Boat said, I've seen enough. Been out here long, he's throwing a lot of pitches, 42, gonna go to the bullpen and bring it. Appear to be Justin Miller. It will be Miller after this commercial break. Now Justin Miller with one out in the 14th, and the Giants leading four to one. 
is aboard. The Rockies saw him on Saturday. They liked him. And they liked him. He went two thirds of an inning. He gave up four runs on four hits. He also walked two. That would work well here. He got the loss. The Rockies came back and won 14 to 11 after trailing six to one. A lot of sliders. Going to sweep him to the outside part of the plate. Occasional fastball. The pitch being thrown now in this game is the 457th thrown. Combined. That's a lot. You can figure them any way you want. It's 457 pitches. Combined. And think of all of the warm ups. And so eight tosses in between times 14. Uh, There's a ton. Yeah, enough. That's a strike, one and one. Tulowitzki on deck. Watching Ron Wotus in the dugout, I, I, he looked down at Uribe, who was playing even with the bag, and he's like, what are you doing? Get back. Play deep at third base. You know, he's, he has set the infield the entire night with Velez and and Uribe, because you got guys that, you know, I mean, Velez is a young kid in the big leagues. Uribe typically a middle infield. Two and two. Fowler at first, he walked, one out. That was a quality swing there by Ionetta. Justin Miller has typically been nothing more than a setup man, which is very important to a ball club. He has no saves in 195 appearances. Hopefully that uh, streak will continue. There's a base hit, and the Rockies will get the tying run to the plate in the guy that leads them in big flies, Troy Tulowitzki. I don't know where you go, but Dexter could hardly get to third base. I mean, to second base. I mean, it, his knee is really, really hurting him, but I don't know where to go. Keith Duggar's talking right now to Jim Tracy. I mean, the only choice he really has is Josh Fogg. I'll tell you one That's thing. That's it. I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing, George. This is not how the Rockies wanted to go into the Dodgers series. Gonzalez had the freak injury. Now Fowler's hurting. Aaron Cook's on the disabled list. But that's baseball, and you got to play on. Tulowitzki with two on and one out. Checked his swing. No, he didn't. He went around. Adam Eaton is on deck. He's got a hit for himself. Troy in the ball game is one for six. This game is now the third longest by time in Coors Field history. 448, longest game five hours, 21 minutes back in August of 06. Two and one. Rockies have played into the 14th inning. They still have only one run on nine hits. Giants four runs, 11 hits. Here's the 2 1, 3 and 1. Jim Tracy called Adam Eaton over, and he is in a long conversation with him right now. More than likely, hey, take till you get a strike. You know, he was a National League pitcher, so he swung the bat both in San Diego and Philadelphia. I've got Doug looking up his lifetime batting average right now. That's a strike, three and two.
194 lifetime average. Thank you, Doug. And you know what? By a pitcher standard, George, that's not bad. Not bad at all. Three and two on Tulowitzki. He represents the tying run. Ball four, and now they're loaded up for Adam Eaton. And on deck is Ryan, excuse me. On deck is, uh, you know what, is Ryan Spielberg's. Got to read through the chicken scratch. So Tulowitzki goes to first. That pushes Fowler to third, Nyanetta to second. That's the 12th walk the Giants have handed out. And that misses. And the outfield, George, because of the big league, it's big lead is still fairly deep. Well, and they should be. They don't want anything over their head to allow the third run to score. They're going to try to prevent that big double play or that big double by somebody. Two and up. Pitcher left in their bullpen is Valdez. He pitched two thirds of an inning two days ago and he gave up four runs right after Miller had given up four. Three and oh on Adam Eat. Uh, Miller hadn't thrown a ball to the inner part of the plate yet while he's been on the mound. He didn't do it the other night either. This is not typical of him. Not throwing strikes. Usually he does. Phil Borgs waits in the on-deck circle. Oh, this is getting fun. Fun earth. Eat that barely got the outside corner. How about, I mean, maybe by a sliver of the baseball. How about this number? Eaton has 32 career walks as a pitcher. Pretty good eye. Yeah. Good work, Doug. Three and one. Way outside. Wow. He just walked in a run, and now a single will tie it up. And you know Bochy's going to go get him. There's no way this can continue. So Spielborgs will come up against Valdez, the last man in the giant bullpen. One out, four to two, and the base is loaded. I hope you didn't turn out the lights just yet back at home. 4-2 San Francisco. And plenty of folks still in the yard. The Rockies have the bases loaded. Ryan Spielboard's coming up. There's one out. And he'll face Merkin Valdez, who he faced two days ago and tripled against him. That would work well right here. Oh, boy. Would it ever. And but prior to that outing, the Valdez had pitched pretty well for this ball club. He'd gone four appearances, three and two thirds. Couple of hits, couple of strikeouts, and a walk. Well, you see the numbers for him on the season. Not a strikeout guy, but he is a ground ball guy. He does throw the ball hard. Nine one on spillboards.
Ryan one for six. In the air, deep right center field. Way back. Rockies win it. Grand slam, Ryan Spielborg. You got to be kidding me. He's sprinting around the bases. Wow. I think words can't explain it. Just let the picture tell the story. What a beautiful sight.